Uh, good morning, Short Track. It is a Monday morning, and we are back from spring break. We went to the tropics. We had a little fun, and we had maybe some of those drinks with those umbrellas in them or something. No, that's really not what we no. did. We just needed a little break. I'm Bob Dillner. He's Connor Sullivan, our guest co-host this week from, I say the great state of Maine for my boy Brandon Paul, but I'll say the uh, state of Connecticut for you. What's that so great about? <laughs> okay, there are... Yeah, there are problems, but hey, it's a nice place to live, and let's face it, we got some good racing up there. You do, Stafford Motor Speedway, Thompson Speedway, but that's about it. You only have two tracks anymore. What yeah. other tracks do you have? It's a small state. It's Lime a small Rock. state. Lime Rock. Lime Rock. Oh, thank <laughs> Lime you, Rock. Tom Ryan they've from the back. Some, they've they've had some stock car racing and modified racing up there in the past. But you're lucky you're not fired today because you're wearing a Hartford Whalers shirt, and I don't believe that's in support of the Carolina Hurricanes. It is yes, in fact, it is in protest considering that they are the ones that stole everything from us. Did they steal, or did like the ownership group just wind up moving it because they couldn't support it like they should in the state of Connecticut? Well, they were greedy. Oh, oh, oh greedy! Wait a second. You want to go back and take a look at the facts? You're just a bitter person, Connor, aren't you? Connor, but I, lo- I love you. I love you, Mark love Killer, with us in the house as well. Connor, just remind him: don't ever let facts get in the way of a good story. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. Right? Uh, hey, uh, for, forget about hockey because we know the Carolina Hurricanes are up to nothing on the team you're rooting for, the New York Islanders, yes, yes. which I appreciate because I, I was an Islanders fan for a long time. But yeah, what happened? Listen, what happened? I I explained. I, I haven't followed the Islanders. I pull for them when they're not against the Boston Bruins or the Carolina Hurricanes. But I will admit to even all my Long Island. You Got, you got, see, you got too many teams yeah, to go for. It. Listen, I, I've lived in North Carolina for 22 years, haven't paid attention for, for, to the Islanders for like 22 years. I don't go to these, you know, like Charlotte Islanders meetups like, you know, my brother Rob Blount does. Uh, you know, I, listen, I, the games, games I go to are the Carolina Hurricanes, okay? You know, like, like, like right. one or two a year, so I'm pulling for them. I, I don't mind if the Islanders win, and if the Islanders win, you know, then we'll see what happens after that. If they go against the Boston Bruins, I'm going for the Bruins, okay? All right. All right. And, and then if, if for some reason they happen to beat the Bruins and they go up against somebody else, you know, from the other conference, then I'll then I'll root for the Islanders. But, but it's a little ways away. All right. All right. <laughs> Let's talk how, racing. How, how was your weekend? Yeah. I had a very good weekend, um, busy to say the least. Um, I think we were all over the map, uh, Mark, but... Uh, not man, quite, just in the south. I was going to say, actually. not really. <laughs> it was just one detour from a normal Pensacola yeah. Poor trip, Connor but. Sullivan. I'm Poor probably, Connor. Yeah, that's, but when that's, the only, that's the one flaw of living in New England is that your geographical... Uh, what's, this, what's the word? Scale, I think, is just kind of thrown off considering that everything's so mashed together up there. But tell you what, though. Friday, Five Flags Speedway. Saturday... Dixie Speed way for the ultimate super late mile series. Uh, little asphalt, little dirt. How can you go wrong? Are you, are you still scrubbing some of that red clay out of your hair from Dixie? No, actually. I really? had very little scrub outs. And again, Mark and Tess, was, he was down in the infield. So we really did not get dusted out. It, it wasn't bad at all. I was very surprised. But Connor, it feels like it's all over the map just because you had to road trip with me. So Yeah. That is true. <laughs> Ultimate Supers in action there at Dixie Speedway and, of course, Lawrence County Speedway on Friday night. And uh, Speed 51 is the official video home of both Ultimate as well as the Fast Track Series. And we'll be talking about Fast Track a little bit later on the show. we got a great guest lineup for today. A lot happening in the world of short track racing, especially uh, if you if you look at some just – Unusual incidents uh, from this past week. We had one with uh, uh, JoJo Wilkinson uh, on Friday night at Five Flags Speedway. Bla- Blaze Rutherford uh, getting into an incident uh, that uh, that that horrific crash um, was seen on our Facebook, our Instagram, as well as Twitter. Uh, got a lot of you know reaction in terms of hey, get well, JoJo. Uh, JoJo uh, was. Uh, in the hospital uh, overnight uh, from Friday to Saturday, uh, broken ankle, broken foot, uh, some some stitches to both her uh, her foot as well as her elbow, uh, but she is healing up, had a concussion as well. She will join us on the show. I've been in touch with John Boy Wilkinson, her dad, over the course of the weekend and, and making sure that JoJo was okay, but uh, uh, she was wanting to come on the show and talk a little bit today. That was an unbelievable very, wreck on Friday night. Very scary wreck. Um I personally did not see it, um, but I certainly heard it. I was kind of, you know, you, of course, know the Tower of Five Flags. Um, I was on the back row um, watching, of course, um, the camera feed for the live broadcast that we had right here on Speed 51. And um, 
I could hear all the officials up front saying, you know, look out, look out. And all I heard was a big boom in the impact. And I just leapt to my feet and saw the results after that. That was a scary one, to say the least. Yeah, it was definitely. And then yesterday in a sprint car race at Toledo Speedway, uh, you talk about it, just a crazy situation. We'll show you the footage of that uh, momentarily here on Speed 51. Just an unbelievable wreck in the Auto Value uh, Sprint Car Series. A- and uh, I-, I just don't get it, honestly. Uh, to tell you the truth, I just don't get it. Because uh, my wife and I, uh, we put the stopwatch to the point where the yellow flag came out and the point of impact and, and it was nearly 12 seconds, 12 seconds. The guy spun on the front stretch. 12 seconds went by until the unreal hit on the front stretch. Uh, I know Cody Geyer is working on a story for Speed51.com on that to see just what happened. Uh, you know, And there's a lot of discussion of that, and we'll discuss that on the show as well. As the short track draft, the first 25 picks have been announced on Speed 51. Of course, the short track draft uh, presented by PFC Brakes, and we'll discuss some of that as well. You got something to say talent. about that. Yes, a lot, lot of, of talent, talent in there for sure. Uh, but first, I think it's time to go to the guy that you're up against. You're rooting for the New York Islanders. He's rooting for the Carolina Hurricanes, and he has our news this morning. Let's go to Zach Evans. Man, it's it's a little warm. Where was the music? It's a there little warm in Slowly. here. I, uh, I think I'm gonna, have to, I'm gonna have to take uh. off this jacket. Um, <laughs> man, we've got a little toasty here in the studio this morning. Jerk. Um, uh, you need to turn the other way, though, Zach. You turn. There you well, go. Block, it, yeah, I don't see. I don't have a bunch of here. jerks. Carolina go. Hurricanes. There we go. There we go. Yes, I am a jerk, and I don't apologize for it, Connor. <laughs> But enough about hockey. Let, let's talk about racing. Uh, starting off with talk about Pensacola here. Uh, Anthony Campy Racing still completely on fire in the late mall world. Colby Howard picking up the win in the pro late mall opener for Five Flag Speedway. Uh, didn't come without a little bit of uh, drama. Just a little bit. A little, <laughs> little bit of drama. Uh, might have booted old Casey Roderick. Might have booted old Casey Roderick. I'll tell you what, though. It probably got um, the sound bite of the year, at least so far, out um, of Robbie Harvey on that one. Um, you can Just watching the teaser on Facebook um, and Twitter for that one, it's, it's a pretty... Did he say contact? He may have said it <laughs> once, twice, or five times as uh, well, but... Love Robbie. Uh, I love, love the him. spirits oh, yeah. of him. I will tell you, we do have um, a recap with uh, Casey Roderick and Colby Howard talking about it. That if it's not on the network yet, it should be coming up today. So you can uh, get both of their takes on that. It was pretty interesting. I think the recap is up, right, Tom? Yeah, it's, it's been up since yeah. Yeah. Okay. Saturday. Yep, recap is up on attention. the Speed 51 Video Network, nine ninety nine a month, seventy nine ninety nine a year. Catch interviews like that, as well as highlights, music videos, and a whole lot more onboard videos. Patrick Hayhe does a great job. He's watching this morning. By the way, Patrick, I root for three teams. Listen, listen, okay? Your Columbus Blue Jackets are going down. That's all I have to say. Back to you. All right. We're going to cheat a little bit on the new short track news segment. We're going to talk ARCA. They weren't at a short track this weekend. They were at the very opposite of a short track. But a former short track draft number one pick, Todd Gillen, picking up the win at Talladega Super Speedway. Um, big win for him, holding off Riley Herbst for the win. Um, they will be going back to the short tracks this weekend, though, going to Nashville. Yeah, live on Mav TV. I'll be there this weekend. Going to be a lot of fun with the Arkham Menard series. And tell you what, um, a great weekend for the Mod Squad at Talladega. You had Andy Sice coming home in the top ten in Arca, and of course, last yesterday in the Cup Series, another podium finish for Priest Lightning, Ryan Priest. And let's not t- forget about Daniel Hemrick, former short track mm-hmm. draft pick as well. A great finish in the uh, Cup Series yesterday at Talladega. And speaking of the short track draft, of course. Uh, Starting to reveal those results last week. Our number one pick this year, Chandler Smith, getting the number one votes from uh, the esteemed panel of experts and former number one picks, racers, just across the board, the people who vote on this deal. Uh, Not Tom Ryan. I, bl- I believe Tom Ryan. Tom, did you get your ballot out. in? That's 
Did he? He said he did. I, mean, so did I think he did I it at the last minute. I didn't minute. see it on the voting list. Okay, okay. I, I didn't I didn't put together the vote. So Brandon Paul took care of that. But 78 people uh, were on that panel of experts uh, that got their draft picks in. Um, and it was a cumulative deal with an equation in terms of quality vote and so forth. And you can see the top 25 picks on Speed 51 right now. Chandler Smith, that number one pick that Zach talked about, will be on the morning bull ring at 740 this morning. And, and one of the really cool things about this year's draft to me was seeing how many guys got number one picks, a record wow. for the draft, 27. That was so, nuts. Wow. Nuts. I mean, it just shows that, you know, these guys, and, and part of it, of course, is, you know, different guys focus on their region more than others. So you got a lot of variety from that. But still, the fact that you can talk about that much talent in the short track world is just incredible. And I'll tell you what, um, Chandler Smith, yes, he was the clear winner, but it's, um, I'll tell you what, it, it wasn't easy, though. There were some guys that had a lot of support. Here comes Pierce, Bobby Pierce, mm -hmm. dirt late model driver, number two pick. You got that, Mark? I picked him number two. Oh, you did? He was my number yeah. two pick. I'm proud so. of you. See that? Yeah. <laughs> All right, so that'll wrap up our news here at 7-Eleven this morning. I'll be back for more later, but let's get on with the show. Yeah, we should go to 7-Eleven and get some uh, coffee and some orange juice and some chocolate frosted donuts I could go or for something a like that. Right now. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah, I absolutely. could go absolutely. for something with a little bit of a kick to it. Yeah, now, Zach, you're not going away from that microphone. Oh, no. No, okay. No, no. I, I would just, just sit my phone just down. Just making just sure down. because we got to talk about this short track draft. Uh, interesting discussion for sure. Um, Chandler Smith, as you mentioned, um, unanimous number one pick. Um, you know, had more first place votes, had more over, you know, uh, uh, quality votes, I should say, uh, than the people right behind him. Uh, but I, I was pretty surprised with Bobby Pierce there in second. Uh, that was pretty impressive. The kid's got a lot of talent, uh, two-time Summer Nationals champion. Uh, he's won on the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series Tour. I mean, the kid is just flat-out talented. And guys he's got, even got done, a great personality. Guys have even done goods in the truck set. El Dora as well nearly won there once or twice as well. But, hey, I had him number three on my ballots on myself, so... Hey, don't underestimate on the guy that gets a, gets a superstar in the making. So, Mark, number two, Bobby Pierce, what's yeah. gotten into you? It's, it's from, from standing here every Monday morning. <laughs> so, smooth operator. No, honestly, uh, and there were, I'm not going to lie, there were a lot of names in that ballot that I just, I knew the name, but I didn't know what they did. And so, once I started researching and looking up some people and, and just what they've done, I couldn't deny Chandler Smith the number one spot. Um, knowing where he's come from and watching him with the old pass series and and I think it was uh, the pro late models, models yeah. yeah and and the transition that he made when he got with with uh, Ricky Turner and all that you couldn't deny him and then what he did with Arca last year and everything but uh, doing some research in Bobby Pierce I was really impressed with what he's done so. Yeah, he was number two for me. Yeah, I, I tell you what, uh, Chandler was impressive last year. And I, and I know, Brandon Ernest, if you're watching the show, I, I know you were a little bit surprised uh, by that number one pick. Listen, the guy went to ARCA last year, set a record uh, in the history books of ARCA, won four straight poles in his first four races in ARCA, won two of those races, finished top 10 in every one, finished top five in the majority of them. Uh, and if you're looking at how we take the draft, which is you are going to evaluate driver talent based on the fact that they have the possibility of going to the upper echelons of NASCAR, the big three. Right there, Chandler Smith is an obvious, you know, top five pick at the very least. So Brandon is a very smart guy, but he was a little bit shocked, a little bit miffed at that number one pick. And, and, and I, I know maybe I'm sharing a personal discussion there, uh, Brandon, but at the same time, it brought up an interesting conversation. How could you not consider, if not pick, consider it? And Chandler, listen, Chandler... Um, I have to go back. It was not my number one pick, okay? He was my number two pick. And I'm not saying he couldn't have been number one, but for other reasons, somebody else was my number one pick. Uh, but I don't know how you couldn't consider Chandler Smith at least top five. Yeah, I also had Chandler Smith as my number two pick um, as well. The only reason I didn't put him as my number one pick is that he just hasn't been in the game quite as long as the guy that I picked at number one. That was the, But that was really the, the only big reason I had. 
Tell you what, we're going to talk a little bit more. Short track draft presented by PFC Breaks in just a couple of minutes here on the morning bull ring. Right now, we're getting ready to go to break, but we have that discussion. We want to find out who everyone's number one pick is. Check it out on speed51.com. We have all the draft picks, the top 25, but the schedule is out. We will reveal even more. We are doing the top 100 young kids in America. That's 25 years or younger. It can come from dirt or pavement. Doesn't matter. Speed 51 is 100% short track racing. On the other side of the break, we'll have that short track draft discussion with Brandon Paul and everybody in the house here at Studio 51 in Concord, North Carolina. Hey, race fans, download the new Speed51.com app today. Breaking news, feature stories, the unfiltered podcast, live race coverage, schedules, and more right at your fingertips. Download it today on iTunes and the Google Play Store. Race Car Engineering is your single source supplier for all your racing equipment, dirt, asphalt, drag strip, street, rod, or off-road. Their experts can keep you on the track and in the lead no matter what type of racing you do. Hundreds of brands, thousands of parts. Find them online at racecareng.com or call them toll free at 800-882-7231 and make sure to ask for your free catalog. That's Race Car Engineering, 800-882-7231. Welcome back to the Morning Bull Ring here in Studio 51. I'm Bob Dillner, Connor Sullivan, Zach Evans, Mark Keeler, Tom Ryan in the house. And remember, we're going to give away something here today. I got a text into a buddy of mine to see if I can give away something very special this morning. But if you share this Facebook post, okay, uh, let people know that you're watching the Morning Bull Ring, you will be eligible to win whatever prize it is that we are going to give away here today. And we'll announce that in a little while. Getting comments coming in already uh, from several different people. Joey Pohl actually uh, joining us here on the Morning Bull Ring. Joey Pohl. Saying he loves this show. Joey Pohl. Of course, late model racer out of New England and a former short track draft pick. Mm -hmm. Yep. And just in action yesterday at the Oxford Plains Speedway in the ACT race. Well, speaking of that race, the man that was there at Oxford Plains Speedway standing by on our PFC performance hotline, the editor of Speed51.com, Brandon Paul. How was Oxford, buddy? It was it was all right. Uh, it was a little bit cold. Uh, they were up against some circumstances throughout the weekend. Uh, Saturday was postponed. Uh, a lot of rain. A lot of rain on Saturday. Uh, I know, you know, over the bankings in turn three and four there, where it's normally all grass leading over to the fence, it was pretty much like a new lake uh, out there. And, and also in turns one and two, um, just a, a lot of water. But uh, Tom Mayberry and the staff there did a good job getting the pit area dry and, and allowing teams and fans to to kick off the season yesterday um a lot of racing uh five divisions two uh two two late model divisions with the pro all-star series and act late model so it was a jam-packed day a little bit chilly but uh but we're from maine we can handle it uh and we got it done so just to clarify, by the way, it was Joe Pohl, not Joey. Joey might not be up yet this morning. I don't know. Joe Pohl, actually, watching the Morning Bull Ring uh, presented by PFC Breaks. If you would like to be part of the Morning Bull Ring, uh, definitely come on board with us uh, for a very uh, reasonable rate. You can be part of the Morning uh, Bull Ring and uh, be the presenting sponsor of the show. Contact us by emailing marketing at speed51.com. All right, Brandon, let's talk about the short track draft presented by PFC Brakes. I want to know, who was your number one pick? Uh, my number one pick was Chandler Smith. Uh, I didn't, I really, I thought the number one this year, in my opinion, 
was was more clear cut um, than maybe what you guys are saying, just based on what Chandler Smith has done, how he's improved off the track, how he's improved in inter- interviews, what he's done at each level he's competed in. Um, he's won in super late models. He's won in ARCA. Um, he's done a lot in, in a young career already, and to me that showed – he was just that little bit above um, the competition and the rest of the people that I put just below him. So I completely agree with, with Chandler Smith being the number one pick. Um, beyond that, I mean, there's there's a lot of discussion to be had um, as far as where people landed. Um, some people that I was very surprised didn't go a little bit higher. Some people we all probably thought we're a little too high, but but that's the glory of it. You never know. You never know what's going to happen. Yeah, let's review actually before we go around this roundtable here in this short track draft discussion. Uh, we we if I was smart enough, I would have asked for a graphic of the top ten, but I wasn't over the weekend. So uh, let's take a look. Uh, Chandler Smith, the number one pick in the short track draft, and of course we have this short track draft. Um, at the same time, the NFL has its draft every single year. It kind of coincides with that. So Bobby Pierce, the dirt late model racer, with that second pick. Christian Eckes, uh, Zach, I think you did the story there, very surprised with his number three selection uh, because of the fact that he's in the Arkham Menard series. He was surprised he got that higher or actually was even involved. Well, first, I'll have to give credit where it was credit. Brandon, wasn't it? It was Connor. <laughs> oh, it was Connor. Right beside him. That was not me. I did talk to Christian earlier in the week because for a preview for the ARCA race at Talladega. But um, I think uh, in terms of just in the time that I've been working for 51 or in short track race, I feel like accomplishments in ARCA have kind of grown in stature a little bit. I don't know if that speaks to the health of the series or maybe just an exposure factor or what. But I know uh, you saw guys like uh, Chase. Excuse me, Chandler, Christian. I mean, it seems to be that doing well at that tour uh, seems to be garnering a little more traction. I would have been curious to see what somebody like a Zane Smith would have done if he hadn't burned his NASCAR eligibility and or draft eligibility by going up to NASCAR after his year on ARCA. I agree with you 100%. Uh, ARCA, uh, they get a lot of exposure from Fox with FS1 and their races that they have on there, and then the rest of them live on MAV-TV. Uh, myself and Jim Trado have the call of all those races. We enjoy doing that. Uh, but ARCA gets a lot of exposure, and you have several ARCA drivers there in the top 25 if you take a look at it right now Chandler Smith number one number three was Christian Eckes Haley Deegan's going to be running uh, some ARCA races coming up here she was number four overall Logan Seavey number five obviously he gets his ranking most likely from his open wheel ranks but he did win an ARCA race last year Connor Okresik uh, from late models but at the same time if you take a look at what he has done he ran the ARCA race at Pensacola so if you go down the list a little bit more, Raphael Lassard has run ARCA. Uh, you go down a little bit further, uh, Sam Mayer has run ARCA. Further yet, uh, one of the Sioux Chief Short Track Challenge Championship contenders this year in ARCA is Corey Heim for Chad Bryant Racing, a former ARCA champion, uh, just a couple of years removed, Austin Terrio right there. Uh, further down the list, the ARCA point leader, Travis Braden, was 20th overall. So uh, a lot of different ARCA drivers or connections to ARCA in that top 25. And I love what ARCA has done with their short track racing, that they have the Sioux Chiefs short track championship. But I think the biggest game changer for ARCA in terms of exposure has been the move to MAV-TV for all those short track races. There are a lot of great tracks on that series, but you can never see them in years past. You know, of course, you had all the big speedway races on all the networks, but since MAV-TV has gotten um, involved, it's been just awesome to see all these great short track races. We mentioned Haley Deegan, number four, Logan Seavey, number five, to continue the top ten. Giovanni Bramani, number six. Jeremy Das, number seven. Connor Okresic, eight. Uh, Derek Krause in the ninth slot. And Raphael Lassard in tenth. All of those drivers in the top ten and even beyond that had number one selections. Chandler Smith, 14 number one selections. Bobby Pierce had number ten number one selections. Then Christian Eckes had uh, six. Haley Deegan had four. Logan C. TV had five, but not as many votes. Uh, nobody had more votes than Haley Deegan. Uh, and she is a hot name in the short track world and in the NASCAR ranks right now. What do you think about Haley Deegan being number four? I uh, I think... 
Go ahead, I Brandon. Think it was, I, I think that was a perfect spot for, for Haley, honestly, and that's about where I, I think I had her third. Um, obviously, I think she, she has a lot of promise. Um, getting those two NASCAR K&M Pro Series West wins were huge. Uh, she's also trying to get more experience in other stuff. We saw her in, in the Pro Late Models down at New Smyrna during, during Florida Speed Weeks. Um, and just talking with her, she's very she's very committed uh, to getting better in everything she does. And, and you mentioned the ARCA starts. Um, when I talked to her about her draft selection as number three, she's she's really putting a big, big focus on that and, and indicated how she wants to try to to get better and to learn as quickly as possible because we see it now when, when you get opportunities at the, at the higher levels, you need to capitalize on those pretty quickly. There, there's not a whole lot of time to get comfortable um, in, in any sort of race car at this point with, with the way the system works and progressing up through the ranks. Like you have to look at like a Chase Elliott or, or even a Christopher Bell uh, where those guys, they, they adjusted quickly and, and found success in order to move up the ladder and eventually get to the top level. Um, but as far as Haley goes, she's also, I mean, her off track, the way she conducts herself, the interviews, the social media, I mean, she's just a, a superstar when it comes to, to doing that and promoting her sponsors. And, and that's a big part of it, too. We all know it. Um, it's no secret. It, it takes more than just talent behind the wheel at this point. Definitely. I think that's probably what propelled her in a lot of the rankings not to discredit her on track accomplishments i mean like you say she has the wins in the k and west series and that but definitely her off track the marketability the name factor you know I, I she brings a lot to the table from that side of it and that's just as important as as being able to drive the race car when she's pretty good at that too Getting a couple of comments coming in as well. Donald Johnson says Haley Deegan is the driver to watch for sure as well. Brad Souza chiming in as well. Haley is going to be the big thing come two to three years from now. She's the complete package, and no one will remember Danica after she makes it to the top three divisions. Uh, listen, I think she's got a whole heck of a lot more talent than Danica Patrick ever had. Uh, Danica did well in the Indy 500. Uh, she was on the pole, and it was really a weight thing. If you really come down to it, a weight thing. That's the reason why she was on the pole for the Daytona 500. We're not here to discuss that. We're here to discuss the talent level of all these draft picks as well as Haley Deegan. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, she was my number one pick. Number one pick, Haley Deegan, from my ballot. And and before you guys criticize, okay, before everyone out there criticizes, what the heck, there's a lot more talented drivers. I see potential in Haley Deegan. I see the fact that she is marketable. She's got the exposure. She's got the power of her family. Uh, she is the daughter of the former X Games medalist and, you know, Supercross winner, monster truck driver, Lucas Oil Off-Road Racing Series driver, Brian Deegan. He's a madman. Mark Keeler's afraid of him. Okay? So Haley Deegan is going to make a name for herself. She's committed. She's working out all the time. You can certainly see that by her by her social media prowess. I wouldn't want to get in a scrap with her if I got into her on the track. Man, she'd kick your butt, Connor. Yeah, she probably yeah, would. She would. <laughs> but, but, but beyond that, she is so committed to learning the craft of racing, and she got a, a lot of hard knocks, honestly, because when she came into late models from the uh, Lucas Oil Off-Road Racing Series, where she was a mod kart champion and a pro light winner over there, um, she struggled a little bit. Well, big deal. She came from dirt, cut her a break, cut her some slack. Haley Deegan is is definitely not the number one person out there in terms of drivers 25 years or younger in terms of talent, but she has the number one most potential. I believe if I was a car owner in NASCAR's big three series, I would grab her because of her potential and her talent behind the wheel, but also because of her marketability as well. It's it's great marketability, but personally, I love it that she can wheel a race car around. You know, she spent all this time on the Lucas Oil Off-Road Dirt Series. You know, they got the jumps um, and everything. And of course, they go left and right there. you got to be able to wheel a race car there, and that's going to be great when it comes to the levels of NASCAR wheeling around those big old heavy stock cars. I agree with you 100%. Mark, you? You just put me on the spot. I there. did. I told you you got to chime in. <laughs> yeah, no, I'm back here hitting buttons. But no, I I totally agree. I was 
really looking forward to see what she was going to be able to do at New Smyrna in the, in the K&N car. And I know that the mechanical woe is actually affected Engine. her there, but, but she was good in practice. She was good in qualifying. And I'm going to be honest, when I first saw her run a couple late model races out west, I wasn't impressed. I wasn't impressed at all. She got in I, the one race that I remember, and I think me and you were both at, uh, at Kern County, and she just got in over her head going into turn three, washed up the track, and ended up wrecking really early. So, but the heavy cars it's a totally different ball game so I, I wasn't impressed those first couple starts i saw her in her late model but now seeing what she's doing with the k&n west series winning on dirt i think is huge um but we've seen how much dirt racing experience helps in the upper levels when it when it comes to somebody like a christopher bell and what he's able to do and he's the one that told us actually on one of our draft shows years ago dirt taught him how to drive the race car asphalt taught him how to race and it's the balance of that and I think her willingness to learn and the fact that she wants to get better, she's not just sitting back, uh, you know, like some and, and thinking that she's great already. She knows that she's got a lot of work to put in and she's willing to do that. So I think that's huge. And she's brave and bold as well, considering that both those K&N West wins, they were basically last, last lap battles as well. Of course, um, you go back to the dirt race um, that was um, dominated by Jagger Jones um, in that one. And she came out of, no out of nowhere in the end um, to win that one. So great at taking advantage of opportunities that come her way jagger jones a top 25 pick as well so uh he is certainly is his stock is rising but haley deegan not afraid to trade some paint too and i like that as well that aggressive nature of that young racer uh brandon paul who is your number one i think we said chandler smith actually that's right i forgot about that you did just did say that all right let, let's go to zach evans real quick and we'll debate him you said your number one pick was chandler smith as well i, I did i did stick with chandler as okay my one mark pick. healer you were chandler smith chandler smith connor sullivan christian eckes christian eckes number mm-hmm. one why uh one of the reasons I said earlier was that um, he's been around um, the game a little bit longer. He's had time to establish himself. Yes, um, 2017 was um, a little bit of a quiet year um, for him, but tell you what, though, I was so impressed um, with what he was able to do on the Arca Menard series um, last year. He had a great rebound year, came, um, came home with, I believe it was three wins last year. But um, I'll tell you what, also going back to that snowball derby win, I know that was back in 2016, but um, for me, that's still on um, right side of the list. But I'll tell you one thing that's really impressed me with Christian Eckes is that um, he has become so much more personable. He's really developed a personality, especially after winning that snowball jury. He is just um, such a pleasure to talk to. He's got that Matt Kenseth sarcasm in him a little yeah. bit, uh, that dry sense of humor. Uh, Brandon Paul, do you think this is a big year for Christian, though, in that crowded TRD development class? There are so many drivers involved with Toyota right now. There's only so many spots. Christopher Bell might find that out after this year. So is this a big year for Christian Eckes to prove himself going after that championship, even after that hell scare and missing that race at Salem in the Arkham Menard series? and his truck races that he has for Kyle Busch Motorsports. Yeah, I think it is, and it kind of goes back to what I said earlier as far as how quickly you need to find success when you're given these type of opportunities. You mentioned the truck races with with KBM, and and those are going to be huge for him. Um, If he can go out and have strong runs, those could go a long way uh, towards him possibly uh, earning a, an opportunity going forward. And obviously his ARCA starts as well. He's going to have that opportunity uh, to, to really showcase his talent by competing uh, in, in arguably the toughest development series in America right now. So uh, I think it's a huge year for him. Um, and, and I'm, I'm with Connor on this one. I, I Connor and I normally don't agree on things, but uh, really don't. If, if I, <laughs> if, if Chandler's, Smith wasn't in this year's draft for whatever reason. Uh, Christian Eckes, he was my number two pick. Uh, when you look at his resume, he has the biggest super late model win uh, or late model win in general out of anybody uh, on the ballot, and he has the ARCA success and, and ARCA victories to go with it. So he's, he's proven that he can get it done in multiple race cars. Uh, you guys mentioned his personality. Um, it, it's not He's not Noah Gregson by, by any means, but he has a good personality. Um, and, and he's coming around with it. So uh, I like the Eckes pick. Um, I had him as number two on my ballot. And, and as you said, I do think this year is a big year for him. Uh, obviously, he'll need to bounce back from from the, the hole he's in at this point. But I think he's definitely able to. He has a good team. So uh, be interesting to see what he does. 
Giovanni Bramani, number six on the list, the third most uh, first place votes in the short track draft presented by PFC Breaks. Uh, very strong votes. Didn't have as many uh, votes overall as some of the people in front of him. Um, I got to wonder because the, the top five, six, very, very tight, Brandon. Uh, you know, some of the scores for personality for Gio maybe brought him down a little bit. Uh, what are your thoughts on where Giovanni Bramani is in the draft this year? I think he. I think he's pretty – where he landed I think is pretty accurate. Um, obviously, he was the hot topic coming in, and I think if anything that boosted him up further, um, having those two super late model wins within, I don't know, what, the past one or two months um, there at the Rattler and then following up uh, at Five Flags. Because other than that, and this is no knock on Geo, I think we all know um, he's talented behind the wheel, but if you, if you threw out those two wins uh, – he has a pro eight model win at Montgomery last year. So then we're talking, he's probably down, I don't know, thirties, 20, high twenties, thirties. Um, so obviously those two wins did a lot for him. And I think he's pretty accurate. I, I, I wasn't buying the whole number one thing yet. Um, I think that was just a case of people probably saying, what have you done for me lately? But I think you have to look beyond that when it comes to the short track draft. So I think six, um, right there in the back end of the top ten, is is probably right about where he should have been. And I'm going to agree with you once again, Brandon. It's just, um, I think the thing with Giovanni Bramani is that yes, he had the two wins um, in the last month, but um, for me, I just want to see how this plays out. Um, like again, he's hot now, but gotta see what he's got um, in the long term, and he just hasn't been in the short track game long enough in the long term. And he's a great kid. But but he definitely needs to improve upon his interview skills a little bit. I'll tell you what, though. Um, even in the last year or so, we've st- still seen some improvement. Um, like Even going back to his Rattler interview, when he gets excited, he can talk. He, he can talk for short intervals. I, I want to see that a little bit longer. you know. I, and I believe that's something that he needs to work on a little bit. Absolutely. And I think one thing that actually impresses me about him um, is the amount of work he's willing to put in on those cars he's he's not one of your typical you know show up with a fire suit and a helmet in a bag uh even just this past weekend he was there right alongside the team working he's he's wanting to do so much and wanting to learn and wanting to progress i think that's huge if you take a look at the latter part of this and and giovanni bramani was right in the middle part logan cv number five giovanni bramani number six das seven okresic eight kraus nine um and rafael lasard ten uh, I'm going to go around the table and just ask who your biggest surprise was that was in the top 10 because you didn't think they should be in there, which is uh, Zach's making faces already. Listen, this is what, you know, Golik and Wingo would talk about on, on a Monday morning. And I'm going to say right off the bat, I'll start. Rafael Lassart surprised the heck out of me, even with the Red Bud 400 win and the big win at Bristol. I'm still surprised that Rafael Lassard is 10th. Uh, a good talent, sometimes beyond the capability of the race car. I uh, had a great run in the Arkham Menard series at Pensacola, then had a bad set of tires in terms of, of stagger and so forth, and the car went away. He could have won that race, and that would have been big for his draft stock. But at the same time, I'm not completely sold, not on the person that Raphael Lassard is, because I love him. He's got one of the best personalities in all of racing. But there's two things in terms if I am a car owner, you know, in NASCAR, looking to draft somebody, his English is still, it's better, much better than when he first came over here to America. Better. He's a French-Canadian. But still, it, it's not where it needs to be in terms of marketability for a product, for a sponsor. And number two, I still see him racing the wheels off a race car. He got substantially better in that KBM ride in the late models last year, but he is my biggest surprise in the top 10. I would have had him top 15, but not top 10. Yeah, the weird thing for me is that um, I actually picked him at number 11 myself um, on my ballots, but at the same time, I was still a little bit um, surprised uh, that he's still well-regarded uh, um, for so many people. But uh, it definitely goes to show just the kind of mark on that he's made is that he's a great wheel man, and again, that personality, it's just I guess it's just something that just sticks with you. And that's the one for me as well. I mean, not to pile on, but I, I will admit I was – a little bit critical of him in my ballot I had him outside the top 20 and it's not because of his talent we know how talented he is and like you say he's a great personality one of my favorite people to interview but 
between the results last year and frankly not sure how many opportunities he's going to get this year to improve that draft stock and improve that marketability and so on and so forth and i just i'd love to see him get a break but i just don't know if it's going to happen for him at this point i want to get to brandon paul on the pfc performance hotline because one more question for him before we get chandler smith the number one pick in the draft on the line brandon who was your biggest surprise in that top 10 Honestly, I think the drivers within the top 10, I'm not too surprised by anything. I am surprised, and I know you guys talked about this a little earlier, but I'm very surprised that Bobby Pierce went number two. Uh, first off, that's no knock against Bobby Pierce. Uh, heck of a dirt late model driver. Uh, great off the track with social media. Great at the track with race fans. He has a smooth operator trailer on the midway or wherever it is at the racetrack. Uh, great guy, won some big races, um, so no knock on him. But when I think of a short track draft, I think of drivers who who I would I would want on my NASCAR team, and, and Bobby Pierce right now is not one of those guys. Um, if I had a dirt late model team, 100% sign me up, Bobby Pierce. Uh, but as far as NASCAR, he still doesn't have barely any asphalt starts. Um, I think he had three one season um, when he was doing the truck deal, uh, Martinsville in Phoenix or, or something of that sort. Um, but as far as his NASCAR potential, and, and he even kind of, when I talked to him the other day, kind of alluded to this, um, he doesn't really know what if there is any future with that. And, and he's fine with that if that's the case. I mean, we've seen guys like Scott Bloomquist and Jonathan Davenport um, really – solidify themselves as, as being full-time dirt late model drivers and, and having a career with it so there's no issue with that uh, but as far as the NASCAR prospects uh, I was very surprised to see Bobby Pierce be placed over someone like a Christian Eckes or Haley Deegan or even a Logan Seavey who has sort of taken steps more steps than Bobby Pierce towards getting to that NASCAR level. All right, Brandon Paul on the PFC Performance Hotline. Hopefully we'll bring Brandon back in for some more short track draft discussion. You can see that top ten right there. Uh, we want to talk a little bit more about Jeremy Das, Connor O'Kresic, Derek Krause, uh, right there from 7th through ninth. a little bit later on in the show. So, uh, Brandon, we appreciate you coming on the show. We're going to get Chandler Smith on the line right now. And, uh, you know, I, I, I want to get gauge your feelings about Connor O'Kresic and where he was in the top ten as well. I was a little surprised on that he was in the top 10. I had him at 13 uh, myself. Uh, I think there's a lot of great prospects um, for Okrezik, uh, great personality, uh, really a lot of talent that's bubbling to the service. Of course, um, he had a big win uh, back at Speed Fest as well. But uh, I just didn't think he was quite top 10 worthy. I don't think he's quite been able to build up uh, that resume in late mile racing just quite yet. Yeah, Connor Okrezik, I think he too – has improved immensely, and he is somebody, honestly, I remember Melissa Straley talking about the fact that Connor O'Kresic's going to be good, and, and, and Melissa said that, and it was a couple of years ago, and I said, hmm, really? So I started paying attention because she told me that, and, and she has worked with Speed51.com for a long time, and, and, and I saw that potential. I saw that talent behind the wheel, um, but Connor O'Kresic still needs to improve a little bit. He's getting better. We had a discussion during the Snowball Derby week down at Five Flags Speedway. Still needs to get a little bit better on his interview side he's making gains on it all the time uh but Connor O'Kresic is a kid that I think next year we might see really where he is going to land and will he be a number one pick I just talked about how Melissa Straley told me about Connor O'Kresic first yeah. I know you've been very high on him as well Mark well, I think sorry yeah and and he um even just this weekend like after after the race was over we were waiting to get some sound with him he had a great battle with his teammate Chris Davidson and his personality, it was was like flowing. I was like, man, where's this? Where's this Connor that we've we've been waiting for to see? And he, you said he's made leaps and bounds. And and his mom even asked us, she's like, please give me some pointers. You know, we want to help him. I, I, talent behind the wheel, not an issue with Connor Crescic at all. To see how far he's come in such a short time, uh, it wasn't any surprise at all for me to see him in the top ten. Um, but again, it's the off track thing that I think is all that he needs to work on there. 
And, and I really think that, you know, another driver that has come such a long way wound up getting those votes. And we're going to go to the PFC Performance Hotline right now and talk to him. The number one draft pick in America. Drivers 25 years and younger, a first-time qual- uh, caller actually here on the Morning Bull Ring. Chandler Smith, congratulations to you on that number one selection. Oh, yeah, I appreciate it, guys. What do you think? I mean, you've been following the draft for a long time. You've seen your name in there for the last several years. We've been watching you since you're 12 years old in a late model. What do you think of that number one selection? I think it's mind-blowing, to be honest. When The first time I was ever in the draft or the first time I ever heard of the draft, I think I was actually put, like, number 55, and I was like, holy cow, we got some work to do to even approve <laughs> on this list. The year after, I think I moved all the way down to, like, 30th, and I, I thought it was a pretty cool deal, you know. I think it's just cool that you guys put on a uh, draft, like, capability of, like, ranking drivers and seeing what everybody thinks about what driver, what they can improve on. You know, it helps me as a driver as well. Like, I've been watching this morning and just listening in myself, just kind of learning and what you guys think about other drivers, even me, so what I can work on. Well, I think the biggest thing, honestly, that you worked on, we always knew you were talented behind the wheel. You needed a couple of those wins. You got them in the late model side. Then you got them in ARCA. But, you know, kind of like we talked about with Giovanni Bramani, as well as Connor Okresic, the two things that both of those drivers need to work on a little bit, their interview skills, saying saying more than one sentence. And honestly, from talking to you when I stood next to your car at Five Flag Speedway several years ago when you were 12 or 13 years old to the where you are right now, you have worked on that a lot as well. Oh, yeah, for sure. And Toyota has definitely helped a lot on that. They focus a lot on media training and uh, stuff of that nature as well. And uh, they've definitely been a huge, huge, huge prospect on me getting better as a person for interviews, practicing, helping, being by my side, just telling me everything that I need to do, just giving me really good feedback and information on what to do when it comes to interviews and hit with, like, questions that you would not even expect you to be hit with. So I have those answers. Hey, here's what's really interesting. And, and, and by the way, I, I know that you've went to that school because you tried to deflect my finger question, you know, you know, with that, all the black <laughs> and blue finger. He tried to deflect my question initially when we were at Salem a couple of weeks ago. And I, as I was talking to him for my pre-race game so I can talk intelligently about him. And, and honestly, you know, it, what was it? Was it broken or was it sprained, Chandler? Well, I went to the doctor just a few weeks ago, and the ligament in my joint of my pinky was completely tore. So I guess it was just a tear in, like, the ligaments, but... Lord, it didn't feel too pretty. I can <laughs> guarantee you that. Well, see, the thing is, you know, you know, Toyota preps him to, you know, sometimes to, listen, deflect questions, bring it back. I've been in those Toyota meetings and so forth with several drivers. In fact, my session uh, in, involved, uh, I believe at the time, uh, involved Christopher Bell, Rico Abreu, uh, somebody else too. Uh, and it was interesting to listen to how Toyota, you know, uh, teaches its kids and they do great lessons for them in terms of how to answer something, go back to one singular thing that you want to talk about and spread your message and so forth but the thing for us as a tv guy you know i'm like what man chandler smith is running well with this finger that's all black and blue you make him <laughs> up you make it sound like a tough guy so uh i i think that's uh, pretty impressive what you're doing but i, I want to actually mention this chandler um if you look at your votes okay 14 overall number one selections but here's the big thing that got you number one. Obviously, you had more number one selections than anybody else. But a 90% quality vote. There's a little equation that goes into that in terms of how many ballots you're on, how many top five versus you know number one versus out of the top ten picks there is. But that quality vote is one of the best ever in the history of the short track draft and rivaled Harrison Burton just one year ago. What do you think of that? That part's mind blowing. I'm just now getting informed about that. That's that's this is just honestly really, really cool. I'm still I'm still just mind blown that I made number one. It's it's like a dream come true, honestly. It's just it's so much it's so cool, dude. Just like I said from a few years ago when I just entered the draft, I started off number fifty five and I was like, Well crap. Well this ain't ever gonna work out for me and be number one one day and look where I am now. Like this is just mind blowing. I just think it's mind blowing where I am in my racing career, to be honest with you now. Uh, it's, I'm racing for Kyle Busch Motorsports, somebody I grew up race or watching race when I was four years old who inspired me to even race. You know, I just think it's all mind-blowing. Yeah, I mean, Chandler, when you look at the last year, you know, going back to your win at Speedfest, all the ARCA wins, could you have really th- – 
thoughts on that you could have accomplished from all this really in the last year? It's it's really quite the record they've been able to build up, man. You know, I went into the ARCA, ARCA deal, and I, I wasn't quite sure to what to think about. We ended up testing Nashville about two weeks before the race, and, you know, it was really good, and all was just very, very different. I've ever drove anything other than a straight rail car, so it was definitely a lot different. I didn't know what to expect in the race. It was a completely different tire. I've never ran on a tire like that before. And after just learning after Nashville, I was like, well, these things are, if you don't overthink the stuff, because I'm bad at overthinking stuff, especially in a race car, I'll overthink everything about a race car and it ended up messing me up as a driver. And I understand that. As I've got a lot better at that, you know. That's why I got a lot better and I was able to get those two wins last year in Arca because I stopped overthinking so many things in the race car. So, um, you know, I realized that as a driver, so it definitely helped me a lot. We had some bad luck in the ARCA series some. I feel like we should have won at least four of the races that we ended up racing last year, but we ended up winning two. But overall, I was not expecting anything that I ended up accomplishing last year. It's, it was mind-blowing, to be completely honest. It was really cool. I thought it was good for me, really good for the organization, for Vince Trini Motorsports. They were left back for the past years. I felt like they were struggling a little bit as an organization and race team. They weren't getting those wins that they needed. They weren't getting those pulls, you know. I guess you could say they weren't really getting that really holy cow. They're out there dominating. You know, last year it was really, really, really hard. It was between Vince Reini and Indian Motorsports. And he had really good quality cars like me, Christian, Zane Smith, Harrison Burton, all them guys. We were always just going at it. So, you know, he ended up winning the championship. It was a really stout field last year. But uh, this year I didn't think it was going to be as stout, but it's pretty darn stout this year as well. But uh, overall, I, I felt like it was really, really good. Yeah, and considering that um, driver lineup um, at Venerini Motorsports, um, you, do you feel like the pressure is on um, to be able to establish yourself in that environment? Um, I think it's all just about, you know, just going out there and doing your own thing and just being able to have a good relationship with your team, good team chemistry, and uh, being able to work good with your crew, work good with your crew chief, and just going out there and be able to try getting those wins, get those polls getting the best feedback you can back to your crew chandler this week you go to the fairground speedway nashville uh, for the arkham menard series and battle there live on mav tv obviously you mentioned last year at Nash- nashville went to the race got the general tire pole award uh and then the car went away a little bit later on in the race and it was your first race as well in the arkham menard series in a big old heavy stock car what are your thoughts going into this week how much are you excited to go back there and try to get that guitar in victory lane I'm really excited. Ever since I've been racing there as a 12-year-old, and I've been wanting to get one of those guitars, and I haven't been able to get one. We almost won the All-American a few years ago, but a little nut, or no, it was a bolt. A bolt went through the radiator and ended up causing us that. So uh, ever since then, I've been just really, really hungry to get a guitar in there to be completely honest with you. And uh, I kind of felt like last year in the ARCA race that we had a good chance of winning it, but also knew the reality of things it was my first race i was gonna have to learn how the tires were gonna wear out i was gonna have to learn you know it's just like a madison this is a good example of why i ended up winning madison just like you so much break at that place it'll just heat up the front tire so much and it's just gonna fall off even more so that was one big thing i learned there that carried out through the rest of the year for sure but um when we go back i definitely feel like we have a really really good chance of winning this thing well chandler of course uh you're the number one draft pick going forward. Um, definitely going to be a lot to prove, um, including some starts coming up um, in the NASCAR trucks. Um, how do you feel about that going forward? Really good. We got through testing in Bristol just a few weeks ago, and uh, definitely hands down was really, really good. You know, I was with the 51 crew with Rudy Hugo and all them guys, and I learned, I've learned probably just those two days of testing about a good month of uh, learning right there in just two days. So it was incredible. It was a, really good experience for me i learned a lot that i was able to carry out through uh i'm going to be able to carry out through all the good feedback with the crew just knowing a little extra those little tiny tiny things that you just tell the crew that's really critical that will help in the race car that i learned from uh rudy telling me about so it was definitely really good i look forward to going back to bristol for that truck race and i just look forward in uh, general running for kbm so Chandler, how many truck races do you have, and where are we going to see you besides Bristol? Uh, I have four uh, truck races. 
my first one is at Iowa, which I have a test coming up there very soon. I got Iowa, Gateway, Phoenix, and Bristol. That's going to be pretty cool. Some good racetracks right there, too. I know you, you love going to new racetracks and, and getting that feel. I, I know you got a couple of Super Elite model races on tap as well this year uh, with Kyle Busch Motorsports and his rally manufacturing race car. Uh, you've sold all your stuff. You, you, your, your dad's done, okay? And, and now uh, he gets to be you know just a fan dad and, and watch you. Uh, but uh, how many races are we going to see in on the Super Elite model side this year? So far, I'm pretty sure we only have four for that, but it's possible that we may add on to uh, a little more because I've been I've been begged to be going to that Slinger Nationals race up at Slinger, and I've I watched some videos, talked to some people that raced up there before, and it looks like a cool deal, and I think I may want to do it, but uh, that's later on. Well, not even really later on in the year; it's not too long away. But uh, we may end up going up to that deal and try giving them a shot of win up there, but. Uh, other than that, it's just four races right now. Just Winchester 400, All American, the Derby, and I think uh, one Blizzard race. Hey, you got to help me out. I was texting with Kyle this weekend, and and, and I'm I'm trying to get you to the Speed 51 Super Select September 7th at Lucas Oil Raceway. So when you when you see him next time and you go into you know KBM up there you know say hey man I I want to get to that race as well I want to go back to Lucas Oil Raceway and run the Speed 51 Super Select. <laughs> 10 for I will do. <laughs> he, 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 was, he said he can't run it. And, and here's the funny thing. I said, uh, you know, hey, he's got an invitation uh, from uh, being a winner last year. And uh, he said, I'd like to, but I can't. I said, dude, why not? He goes, well, I, I got the Xfinity race that weekend. I said, man, Xfinity car over a super late model? And, and he said, you know, <laughs> one pays a little bit better. The other one, I actually, I actually have to pay to race. So I understand his standpoint for sure. <laughs> uh, you, you know, let, before I let you go, um, and, and are we going to school this morning or what are we doing now? Because you still oh, go to high school, that. right? Oh, yeah, for sure. I'll be going to school tomorrow. I'm about to head up to Nashville for uh, the ARCA test today. We're testing up there. Okay, 10-4, 10-4. Uh, you know, I, I just want to know, amongst the Toyota Racing Development drivers, that class right there, it's a unique group, and there's a ton of you. Is there a little rivalry among all, among all yourselves? Uh, no, but I'm sure everybody's competitive with each other, and, you know, uh, everybody wants to be the best out of everybody. So uh, I think that's just part of human nature. Everybody wants to be better. They want to be the best. I definitely can say for myself, I always want to be the best. I want to be number one. That's why I'm still mind blown that I'm number one on the short term draft. I can't keep saying that. I sound stupid saying that, but uh, <laughs> it is mind blowing, honestly. I'm 16 years old. I believe has a 16 year old ever been number one on the draft pick? How old was Harrison Burton last year? 17. 17. Yeah, he's 18 now because he ran X in the car. How old was Chase when he did it? Oh, Chase, I, we have to go back to that. I bet you he just stumped us. Yeah, you, you. <laughs> I bet you you rival your Georgia counterpart there, Chase Elliott, because he was uh, the number one pick. We could figure this out real quickly. Of course, my my computer went into like freeze mode here for a second, um, but I put my password in there, and we have our past drafts actually saved uh, on this uh, you know spreadsheet that we. Thomas have. got it listed as twenty ten. Chase was seventeen when he uh, was elected first because I'm pretty sure it was right after he won Pocono in the Arctic car. Yeah, it was, you know, if you look back at the drafts, it's, you know, Chris Bell was 2015, Daniel Hemrick 2014. Some big-time names here, by the way. Even Bubba Pollard, when he was uh, young enough to be able to do it, was a top draft pick back in the day. But 2010 was Chase Elliott. Um, Zach is doing the math right now. We'll find out because we before we let Chandler Smith I'm the wrong go guy to be doing math. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we we, we want to find out if he is indeed the youngest. I, I I think you might be equal or just a year older than Chase Elliott. Let's find out. Zach Evans on the call here. He, we're still waiting. We need the Jeopardy music, Mark. That's what we need right here. We need the Jeopardy music. But I, by the way, just while we digress, oh, he's got the answer. He was born November 28th, 1995, so he's 23 now, which means in 2010 he would have been, yeah, really young. Really young. <laughs> so second <laughs> second oldest, Chandler. You almost did it. You almost did it. Did it. Uh, your peach date boy there, Chase Elliott, beat you. Oh, Lordy. Well, he also got that big W yesterday. That was pretty darn cool, especially since the background was still there. That was, that was really cool to watch. 
Have you ever been to Dawsonville to hear that, you know, that, that bell toll? I live 20 minutes from Dawsonville. I go there a lot, but I've never been there for when he wins. I've been over there when it's just ringing. 10-4. Well, we, can, we congratulate you on being the number one selection for sure. I, I know it's mind-blowing uh, for you, and uh, we're real excited for you. And I can't wait to see you at Nashville this weekend with that Arkham Menard Series race live on MAV TV. Oh, yeah, man. I appreciate it. I'll try to grow a few more inches so you don't have to uh, get down on my level. So <laughs> there you Chandler, go. Love, the, love, that the humble, love the humble attitude, man. Glad that. <laughs> I appreciate it, guys. Thank you all. You got it. Chandler Smith, number one selection in the short track draft, presented by PFC Brakes right here on Speed 51. See the top 25 picks currently. Uh, the rest of the 100 going to be announced here in the next couple of days. You'll be able to see all that on Speed51.com. Connor Sullivan, Bob Delner, Zach Evans, Mark Keeler in the house. We'll be right back here with some more discussion and talk a little pro late model racing at Five Flag Speedway. Remember... Share this post to enter to win something. I still haven't gotten a text back from my buddy. I'm still waiting for something, a text back. Something. We're giving away something here on Speed 51 if you share this post today. Speed 51's video network, where the battles are legendary. Get the full picture on short track racing. We'll take you behind the scenes. Uh, just a meathead. Your track, your driver, your sport, your passion. Dirt, late models, modifieds, and more. Race highlights, recaps, interviews, and thousands of on-demand videos. Speed 51 Network, short track racers home for the best video coverage. Return to Bristol Motor Speedway. May 31st and June 1st. For tickets, visit BristolMotorSpeedway.com forward slash tickets. Just past 8 o'clock in the morning, it is the morning bull ring on Speed 51 after a week off because we were all on spring break. We were vacationing right now. We were at short tracks, dirt tracks, paved tracks, you name it. 100% short track racing is Speed 51. I'm Bob Dillner, Connor Sullivan alongside of me. we got a lot to talk about this morning, including the short track draft. We're going to talk a little dirt racing with the fast track series. We're going to have some more draft picks on as well. We're going to talk about what happened at Toledo yesterday. Talk about uh, what happened Friday night at Five Flags Speedway. But first, cue the music. Mark Keeler's not ready. <laughs> I'm, I'm lining wow. up. This is a primitive else. show, okay? Is it it's news raw. now? News. That's, oh, okay. There we go. Well, now I got to steal my spotlight. <laughs> now I got to. Oh, actually, Zach hit the music. I just didn't have it turned up, apparently. There you go, so. Zach. <laughs> I, I'm Zach's trying, man. I'm trying so hard. The, these people trying to keep me down. Keep Unfortunately, me out you're, still, you're still a jerk, though. <laughs> oh, absolutely. And don't you forget, buddy. Don't Go Canes! Go Canes. Weather leading green for life. Oxford Plains had a pretty busy weekend. Um, in the uh, past race, it was Garrett Hall picking up the win. That was the headline event of the weekend, but there was lots going on down there, and you can, or up there. I'm good at direct directions, and uh, <laughs> you can check it all out on speed51.com. I can direct you there very easily. There you go. By the way, thank you to uh, old uh, Jam for getting us the photo yesterday. I saw that on Twitter. He was flying like an eagle, uh, but we appreciate him getting that uh, photo of Garrett Hall crossing the finish line. Busy weekend also for the Ultimate Super Late Mall Series. Two races this past weekend. I was there at Lawrence County in South Carolina on Friday, and Connor and Mark went to Dixie in, on Saturday. Uh, on Friday, it was Ross Bales picking up the win. 
Go ahead. I know you want to. Hells bells, baby. There you go. <laughs> and it was Casey Roberts winning on Saturday. He was the runner-up on Friday, so pretty good weekend for the three-time ultimate champion. Great hey. duel with Michael Page as well. And Michael Page, he knows Dixie Speedway like the back of his own hand. Um, he actually had the lead um, early on. It looked like it was going to be a runaway, but Robert so he was able to run him down in the final laps. Really good race for the Ultimates on Saturday night. Michael Page had a little suspension damage I saw earlier in the day as well. Yeah, so he lost to a, overcome that, that's pretty good. Yeah, he lost a wheel um, in hot laps. Um, there were some people that, that thought, oh, that's it for him, but they did a great job to get that car back together and be competitive that night. What happened to my boy J.D.? Okay, that's what I want to know, he, Superman. He was, he was middle of the top ten most of the night. Um, decent hot laps, um, decent um, in qualifying, but uh, it looked like he was making some movement um, there up through the top ten, but just never was able to get um, up to the lead. Maybe a few cautions might have helped him, but uh, looks like he had a top five car, and that's where he came out. Eh, some kryptonite Lap. at Dixie. Lap traffic was... Um... Not a fan of the uh, the front runners. They they weren't too happy with it. But for us, from a spectator standpoint, it made for an unbelievably entertaining race. Northwest Super Late Mall Series got their season kicked off finally. Their originally scheduled opener, the Apple Cup, was a rain out. It was postponed, but they got underway with the Leonard Evans 150 this weekend at Wenatchee Valley. Grayson Raz picking up the win. Brittany Zamora second. Alan Cress rounding out the podium there. Grayson Raz, how about that? Yeah. Former draft pick. Uh, last year he was very critical of our draft, and we did see a couple of people actually still critical of it. Uh, you know, Corey Dozer didn't have a, a bad comment, and, and Corey uh, says he's going to prove us uh, prove us wrong and get out there and run real well this year, and that's what we want you to do, honestly. And somebody else actually chimed in as well uh, saying they need to do that. That's what we want to see. We want to see you go out there and do well so you can have your uh, stock rise just a little bit here in the short track draft. Oh, we love talking about it. before the draft, after the draft, you know, after the races. It's 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 just a really fun conversation to have, even if you don't agree with what we thought. And lastly, if you didn't watch the Wheelman race this weekend at Citrus County, if you weren't watching live on Speed 51, you missed a barn burner. It came down to a photo finish between Brandon Morris and Joe Winchell. And if you did miss it, you could see the on-demand replay or the highlights on the Speed 51 network. I was watching in my Gosh, what a race. Got to give a shout-out also to Alec Jorgensen. He's been the wounded warrior lately, but um, able to get it on, to get it on camera for us. So great job by Alec. Yeah, maybe we'll call that video up and just show you a little glimpse of it at some point. But right now we're going to the, you hear that, Tom? Gonna go to the PFC Performance Hotline. He, he's just doing other stuff up there. But uh, PFC Performance Hotline with the winner from Five Flag Speedway on Friday night in the Allen Turner Hyundai Snowflake uh, Series down there, the road to the snowflake. Colby Howard, driver for Anthony Campy Racing. Thank you for joining us here on the Morning Bull Ring. Yeah, guys, thanks for having me on again. Really, really cool. You got it. Uh, definitely uh, good times to be on the morning bull ring because it probably means you did something really well. You <laughs> won that race uh, on on Friday night. Uh, you know what was that like to get to Victory Lane at Five Flags Speedway because that is a historic racetrack. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, me and Anthony were talking before the race and it's talking about how physically abrasive that track is and you know, how there's only been like a few, like, I think four or five people who have really won those races like the past few years so to be able to go out there and, and win like that that was pretty cool but it didn't come without a little controversy and i heard you in victory lane and, and heard what you had to say uh but tell me what shook down between you and casey roderick there when that contact was made in between turns three and four yeah so we just had a restart and the car just hasn't been that great all night but after these red flags I don't know why, but the car was just, it was making the car fire off really well. And um, we had that restart on the outside of Casey. Um, I don't know, my car just fired off, got under him, coming off of two. And I know him and Casey, uh, him and Anthony are really good friends. So I want to respect him and give him a lot of room. But I just went too low going into three. I got down the apron, car bottomed him out, and I just got right up into him. It it was really a stomach dropping moment because that's not something you you want to go out there and do being a up and comer like I am. I saw you and Casey shake hands there near Victory Lane. Uh, what did he say to you? Yeah, he he wasn't that mad. I mean, he was mad that you know he got wrecked by a kid, but 
he knew what happened. Um, he knew I bottomed out, got into him. He just told me to just be more careful, and you know, I got a fast car and just be a little bit more spec out there. Ten four. You can see that video recap on the Speed Fifty One Video Network. Just nine ninety nine a month, seventy nine ninety nine a year. See all the highlights and interviews, music videos, onboard cameras, and a whole lot more. Yeah, and you can see in the highlights, some um, as well as you know, as well as the full broadcast as well. Um, that uh, when I saw the car bottom out, so I mean, you can see the sparks. Um, I knew right then and there he's like, oh no, he's gonna drift up. He's probably gonna turn Casey around, and unfortunately, that's what happens because it definitely looked like you had every intent on trying to make that car turn through that turn. Yeah, it's it's just one of those things. These cars are so low to the ground, and three and fours are really bumpy corners. So when you get real low like that, and the car hits, I mean, there's just not much you can do other than just hope and pray he can hold on to it you know well listen here here's what i'll say colby uh if you look at that incident uh my son and i were watching from our couch because the race was seen live on speed51.com for uh premium subscribers only so uh more than 100 live races on speed 51 this year and when we were watching that i said oh look casey left the door open he went a little high in the corner colby's gonna he's gonna fill the hole Listen, you know, sometimes when you leave the door open, contact is going to happen. So what I would say to Casey Roderick, if you don't want that to happen, don't leave the door open because you had only <laughs> one choice, and that's to stick your nose in there. <laughs> yeah, I really, he was getting real tight when restarts like that. and I just saw a hole, and I filled it, and it just, just didn't end up how we both wanted it to. And I'll, and I'll tell you what, um, Colby, what a comeback as well. You um, went to the back. Um, after the contact um, with Casey out there, and you had a nice drive to the front. And I'll tell you what, um, you went um, through um, both Connor Okresik, um and Chris Davidson. It looked like fairly easy uh, in those final laps. Yeah, the team, Anthony and my spotter, Bruce, they did a really good job calming me down because I just hate when stuff like that happens on the track. I don't want people to think I'm like a dirty driver. I definitely didn't want to lose respect from Casey. So I was just really down about that. They had to calm me, calm me down and, you know, get me back focused on the race. And, I mean, I thought I blew the race. I thought – I didn't know that um, all these cars had dropped out. So that was a really big factor too. But, you know, that first restart, it got pretty wild. Um, Casey had some contact and got some – got a tire rub and a bunch of stuff happening back off camera that we didn't get to see. But, yeah, the car was just really hooked up. Um, we, uh, we started going – we were about four tenths faster and then cars started slowing back down, but we had that caution and that caution is really what won that race. So Colby, I want to know, you know, a couple of wins already this year. Uh, definitely your draft stock is going to be on the rise. This latest win probably came just a little bit too late because it's after all the ballots were in. Uh, if you had to rank yourself in the short track draft and we rank the top 100 drivers in America, put you on the spot here, buddy, where do you think you should be? <laughs> Um, I don't know. This is a really tough question. I've been asking myself this too, but I was hoping that I was going to be top 25 at least. I know this win was a little late, but hopefully I'll be in the next one that gets released. Yeah, we're going to go 26 through 51 next, and then we'll do the remainder of the top 100, uh, and then have a lot of other stories around it and so forth. you got a lot of competition there. I'll I tell you that. What do you think in terms of what you've seen so far, Chandler Smith being the number one pick, uh, Haley Deegan was number four, Christian Eckes uh, number three, you had Bobby Pierce, a dirt late model racer, number two. What do you what do you think about what you've seen already? Giovanni Bramani, your teammate there and Anthony can't be racing was number six yeah it's definitely like these all these drivers like the top five I've always kind of watched them you know Chandler Haley Christian I've always watched them in their super and ARCA races and you know I'm finally kind of racing with them race with Christian and uh Chandler and, and my ARCA races so I know they definitely have a lot more experience than me so I definitely wasn't expecting you know top five or ten but hopefully you know I, I'll be 26 to 50 somewhere in there well Kobe uh, of course they call on the Alan Turner's uh, pro late mile series the road to the snowflake 100 and of course uh, winning big races that can get your draft stock up um, how do you feel I know it's early I know it's still April but how do you feel um, going into the rest of the season and of course with the snowflake 100 looming at the end of the season 
Yeah, these these past few races have been a real big confident booster booster with me and the team, especially on their super side. This team's just really been on fire the past few weeks. Um, you know, I'm just really hoping we get a few more wins. And right now, the snowflake isn't on the schedule, but maybe we come up with some money and hopefully go and defend the title for Anthony. Hey, Donald Johnson has a question for you on social media in terms of racing at Five Flags Speedway. How much are we going to see you there this year, race that Pro Late model and so forth? Well, we have all of the um, Allen Turner races on the schedule, but like I said, we don't have the snowflake yet. Yet, Hopefully we can get some money worked up and go there and, like I said, just defend the title for Anthony. You definitely need to do that. You need to be in the Snowflake 100. You talk about putting your you know, name on the map and, and raising your draft stock a little bit. That certainly would do so. You can see some of the highlights right there on Speed51.com. That's just a portion of what you'll see if you are a premium subscriber. Um, do you have any other races outside of that realm at Five Flags Speedway this year? Yeah, so all the snow, uh, Alan Turner and then the Show Me the Money series also – um, I think we're going to New Smyrna one time, and my last race will be at Cordial, and also my ARCA races. What ARCA races do you have? Well, right now we're, we're going to Iowa and IRP. I'm really looking forward to Iowa. I've always wanted to go there, finally getting to go. Should have a pretty good car there, and just hope for a good good race. Well, Lucas Oil Raceway, uh, which you referred to as IRP, going to be a great race for the Arca Menards Series uh, there in October this year, so a little bit later on than it was originally scheduled last year. But, uh, uh, Connor, I know Colby Howard, one of the guys you have your eye on. I had my eye on him last year after meeting him at Salem, and he did well in that race. Uh, seems like he, he can wheel a car. Yeah, I definitely think so, and uh, it's going to be very interesting, um, Colby, to see, I think, what you do going forward you definitely got um a lot um of potential and i don't know it's it's gonna be interesting um, to see going forward yeah thank you um yeah, this year's really just started off really well um haven't had too much bad luck i don't want to jinx it but usually i just have a lot of bad luck and when i get opportunities like this but so i'm just really happy that you know we've already gotten these two wins like this um Hopefully we can get a few more going back to Montgomery May 10th, I think it is. So hopefully we can get another win there. The Show Me the Money series at Montgomery Motor Speedway in Alabama. Always tough circuit for the pro late models. And, of course, Colby Howard on the line with us on the PFC Performance Hotline as the winner from the Allen Turner Pro Late Model Race Friday night at Five Flags Speedway. We'll see where you're going to be in the draft, Colby. we got more draft picks being announced here today and tomorrow on Speed 51. A big congratulations on the win at Five Flags Speedway. And uh, let's see where you wind up in the short track draft. Thank you, guys. It really means a lot. Colby Howard, uh, driver for Anthony Campy Racing. Uh, interesting to note that he's going to be running a couple of races this year in the Arkham Menard Series as well. You know, it's going to be interesting to see where he falls this year, but uh, tell you what, going into the 2020 short track draft, ooh, boy. I think he's going to have his stock going up pretty well. Especially if he's able to get that Snowflake 100 at Five Flags Speedway going for Anthony Campy Racing because who won that race last year? Anthony Campy Racing with Chase Purdy. That's right. Tell you what, coming up, we're going to talk more about Pro Late Models at Five Flags Speedway. A horrific wreck the other day. Uh, just really tough to see. Go to our Five Star Race Car Bodies Facebook feed right now. You can check it out there. We'll show it to you here on the Morning Bull Ring when we come back. JoJo will be on the line, and we will talk to her as she recovers from her injuries at Five Flags Speedway. You talk about a, a talented up-and-coming lady. She is dedicated beyond anything. She is somebody to watch here in the short track racing realm. We'll be right back. Video Network, where the battles are legendary. Get the full picture on short track racing. We'll take you behind the scenes. Uh, just a meathead. Your track, your driver, your sport, your passion. Dirt, late models, modifieds, and more. Race highlights, recaps, interviews, and thousands of on-demand videos. Speed 51 Network, short track racers home for the best video coverage.
It's Bristol, baby. The Short Track U.S. Nationals return to Bristol Motor Speedway. May 31st and June 1st. For tickets, visit crystalmotorspeedway.com forward slash tickets. Welcome back to the Morning Bull Ring on Speed 51, 821 in the morning. Hopefully you got your cup of coffee, maybe brush your teeth, listening to us, watching us, driving down the highway, maybe while you're having breakfast or something like that. Whatever it is, make sure you share this Facebook post because you will be eligible. I need a drum roll. Can anybody give me a drum roll? Can anybody? Come on. It's like, you know, Christmas vacation here. Can you do it, Zach? I, I, was, I was a tuba player in band. Do you I remember Ch drums. Chevy Chase? Okay, and he asked for a drum roll, and everybody does it. You know, come on. Is that going to be big enough? Oh, Does whatever. it pick up on the mic? Anyway, I don't know. The, the, the prize for sharing this Facebook post, uh, you will be eligible to win two tickets to the North-South Challenge at the Fairground Speedway Nashville this weekend here in Tennessee. That big race uh, that combines the Southern Super Series, the Cars Tour, as well as the CRA Super Series. Uh, you know, a tri-sanctioned race there, and it'll be a big show. Also, the Arca Menard Series in competition as well. The other night at Five Flags Speedway, the Pro Late Models uh, were racing there at that famed racetrack. It was a good race. We just talked to Colby Howard, who was the winner of that race in a dynamic duel with so many people. Uh, Connor Okresik was in there, Chris Davidson, and, of course, the contact as well that Colby Howard had with Casey Roderick. We discussed all that, but the other thing that came out of that race the other night uh, was just an unbelievable wreck on the front stretch. And, and here is that wreck right now. Mark Keeler, a great job uh, that he did with the camera work. JoJo Wilkinson in that number 11 uh, had something happen to that car, spun off the corner, then the contact by Blaze Rutherford. A lot of smoke on the front stretch. We'll take a look at that once again to see exactly what happened there at Five Flags Speedway because that was a wreck that just caught everybody's breath. Here it is again. JoJo looping, coming up off the corner, and then Blaze Rutherford. Rutherford does not see her car and a hard impact into the driver's side door. We'll go to the PFC Performance Hotline and join JoJo Wilkinson, who comes on the morning bull ring here with us. First time caller and JoJo, we all want to know. I know it was a tough last couple of days. How are you this morning? I'm doing good. Obviously, you had the broken ankle, uh, broken foot. You came into the race with a broken foot, but re-injured it as well. Uh, some stitches, a concussion, and so forth. Uh, how difficult has the weekend for, been for you? It's been pretty difficult, but just knowing all my support and all my friends and family that have came by and helped me, just my sisters and my dad helped me all day um, since the wreck has happened. So just definitely very thankful. What what do you remember about the wreck from Friday night and what occurred and so forth? All I remember is spinning out and then, well, I know that I got hit. I remember that, but I don't remember anything after that. And then um, the ambulance person asked me um, where I was and who my dad was. So I definitely... I definitely remember saying that's my dad and I'm at the racetrack, but that's really all I remember about the wreck. Yeah, I talked to your dad a couple of times over the weekend, John Boy Wilkinson, who used to be a great late model driver, uh, and you're a second generation race car driver. Uh, looking at the video, because I know you know by social media you've looked at it. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on everything that occurred and and and, and the smoke and everything that you saw there? What what are your thoughts on all of that? Well, there was really nothing that Blaze could do, if you want me to be honest, because there was so much smoke and stuff, and it all happened so fast. So I guess it's just a racing thing. We were just at the wrong spot at the wrong time, but yeah. Yeah, definitely a tough deal. And as you continue to work your way up the ranks, uh, you know, how long is this going to put you out of the seat? Because I know you probably already have the desire to get back in that race car. 
Yes, sir. Just as soon as my foot gets better and um, we get a car together and motor and everything. So I'm just hoping as soon as I can. You know, in terms of the reaction that you got on uh, Speed 51 uh, through the social media channels this week, I saw you on there liking a lot of those posts and so forth. So many people hoping that you were okay, wishing you a speedy recovery. What does that mean to you, JoJo? It means everything to me because this is why I do it. All the uh, fans and friends and family be showing their support and just wanting me to do- to do the best that I can do. So I'm just trying to prove to them that I can do the best that I can be. And them support me just wants me to drive harder and push harder to be the um, better driver that I can be. Well, JoJo, I'll say one thing about you. You've definitely shown um, how tough you can be out there. Uh, you know, just coming into the race on Friday, uh, an injury um, like that, uh, that would put um, a lot of drivers on the sidelines. But uh, I'll tell you what, though, uh, you were – loaded for bear on friday night so i'm ready to go i was very impressed uh, by that yes sir it was definitely difficult but as i was sitting in the car with broken foot i just knew that um i had so much support around me so i wanted to push harder and drive harder and i definitely did that and i tried to make my dad happy and prove to him that i was okay and that i could be able to drive the car you know, your dad was a great racer. I, I remember watching him, and we talked several times. In fact, when Speed 51 began, your dad was still racing, uh, and, and we got to interview him, him a bunch of times, and I'm sure his name is mentioned several times in our archives on Speed 51. How much of an influence has your dad been on you trying to progress as a late model driver? Oh, uh, He's the biggest influence I have. He's technically the only person I have, him and my sister really and um just being with him 24 7 will be on the way to eight i'll be sending me a video of him racing from a long time ago so he's definitely a big influence and i've learned a lot from him and i've actually learned the most from anybody from him so he's definitely the biggest influence i have of course jojo you're so young but uh you've done a lot um in the racing ranks um in the deep south especially in your home state um of alabama uh, just kind of tell everybody what you've been up to these last couple of seasons. Well, um, I've just been trying to get as much seat time as possible so I can be able to go and race with big-name people like Bubba Pollard and Colby Howard, Casey Roderick, just a whole bunch of people like that and learn from the best, you know, and just trying to get more seat time. Um I was actually looking forward to, like, a championship or something this year since I got Rookie of the Year last year in Montgomery. So just a lot to look forward to. Yeah, that track championship at Huntsville, Alabama, that was pretty unbelievable as well. Uh, you get a lot of press around that area, and now you're starting to spread your name as well. You're starting to race with some of those big guns like you mentioned. You know, I want to know, outside of your dad, who has been influential? Who has tried to reach out? put their arm around you, and help you learn how to become a better racer? Um, Augie Grill, if it wasn't for him, some of this wouldn't be possible as well. Um, We're always at the shop or eating dinner or something. He's always talking to me. Or even at the racetrack during practice or something, he'll miss a practice for him and come and help me on the race car. And even down in, like, off Alabama for the Rattler, um, Anthony Campy, He came down and talked to me and my dad for a little while and tried to teach us some stuff. So I definitely have a little bit more influence around me and at the restaurant. Well, I'll tell you what, um, there's a lot of talent um, coming up um, in the state um, of Alabama, like yourself, um, Connor Kresic, um, a lot of drivers like that. Um, I don't know, could we see a brand new Alabama gang in the making here? Man, I hope so. It would mean everything, really. You know, JoJo, I want to talk about what you want to do. You know, we, we've seen you run in pro late models. I know maybe super is something that you're itching to get be part of at some point. Uh, how do you want to progress? So what is the timeline for you of what you would like to see with your driving career once you recuperate from these injuries? Um, I would love to make it into ARCA or even k and just to test or something and get my name out there and just have some seat time and let me learn just a little bit more 
and learn all I can. So definitely um, in the next year or two, even drive for diversity, just getting out there and running one of their like models would be amazing because you learn so much. So just learning all I can and then an ARCA ride or cutting in, just anything. So in terms of these injuries, and, and we mentioned the broken ankle, the broken foot, uh, the stitches and the concussion and so forth, talking to your dad, um, you know, you're going to be resting a lot here and have rested over the last couple of days. You know, a very tough hit the other day at Five Flags Speedway. What is the timeline, do you think, in terms of those injuries and so forth before we see you back at the racetrack? I really don't know. I go to the doctor Wednesday and find out everything, so I'm hoping maybe um, a month or a couple of weeks, just trying to get back in the seat as soon as possible. Yeah, you sound like a true racer for sure. Uh, you know, I, I know you've talked about the support that you've had after that incident. You know, what do you want to say to your fans that have reached out? Oh, there's so much to say. I can't thank them enough. Just showing me support and love. It just makes me want to get back in the car right now and drive, you know. It's just amazing. I can't thank them enough. I tell you what, I love your spirit. I love your dedication to racing. Love your family. Love your dad. Uh, that was tough to see the other night. Um, actually, I didn't get to see it live. We didn't capture it, but uh, Mark Killer did have that shot, um, and, and I, I just cringed as soon as I saw it, JoJo. So I, I wish you the best. I wish you a speedy recovery on behalf of everybody here at Speed 51, and I know you, your dad, you got my number. Uh, certainly let us know your progress, how you're doing, because we want, we want to see you back at the track real soon yes sir thank you so much you got it jojo wilkinson uh on the line with us this morning and and like i said you know you look at that crash and it, it's like wow i i mean blaze rutherford going through the smoke uh, a lot of people you know saying that he should have slowed down okay I, you know it's very difficult you see smoke you don't know where you know that car that is spinning is going uh made contact with the worst part of that race car right at the driver's door and, and i've seen the pictures of that cockpit and, and you know how the door bars you know got hit there uh, and that was a major impact and and jojo uh she's a trooper coming on our show here today john boy wilkinson her dad um you know talking to him all weekend long um, you know, she's uh, she's ready to get going again, but she's got some injuries to recover from. Yeah, I'll tell you what, um, she's really tough as nails, uh, to say the least. But, uh, man, it, in, again, I didn't see the wreck um, personally, even though I was at Five Flags. Uh, but, again, I was in a position to hear that wreck. And uh, I'll tell you what, that's a memory that's going to stick with me for quite some time. It's just one of those things uh, where, you know, even just watching, it, it can stick with you. Uh, no matter what, but uh, tell you one thing. Also, glad to see Blaze Rutherford. I was okay. Um, that was scary watching him get out um, of the car too, and he just collapsed to the ground. I don't know if you um, if you've seen the picture of the steering wheel from his cockpit as well. That was some very very vicious impact. Yeah, Mark Killer had some shots of the front end of that race car the other day, which you saw in our trackside now coverage, which was just unbelievable to see. And then Robbie Harvey actually posted on Twitter uh, yesterday uh, just the, the cockpit and the wheel and how mangled uh, Blaze Rutherford's car was as well. So, uh, yeah, just a scene that you don't want to see. But fortunately, and I, I say I understand that JoJo's got injuries, and John Boy and I talked about this a little bit. We understand that. But you never know what's going to happen in an incident like that. And, and we feel very fortunate due to the safety of these race cars that JoJo wasn't injured even further. So uh, fortunately, that was the case. So we got a lot more to talk about here on the morning bull ring, including the short track draft. More discussion about that. The ARCA Midwest Tour kicks off its season this weekend in Wisconsin. We'll talk about that as well as the Fast Track Series, the Fast Track Racing Series in action this coming weekend it's going to be a big dance in tennessee carson ferguson will be joining us on the line here on the morning bull ring we'll be right back speed 51's video network where the battles are legendary get the full picture on short track racing Take you behind the scenes. Wow. Just a meathead. Your track, your driver, your sport, your passion. Dirt, late models, modifieds, and more. 
race highlights, recaps, interviews, and thousands of on-demand videos. Speed 51 Network, short track racers home for the best video coverage. Return to Bristol Motor Speedway. May 31st and June 1st. For tickets, visit BristolMotorSpeedway.com forward slash tickets. It's the morning bull ring, speed51.com. Every Monday morning, 7 a.m. to 9.30 a.m. I say every Monday morning, but last week we took off. Spring break. We were chilling out just a little bit, trying to recuperate from all the great racing action that's going on around the country. I'm Bob Dillner, Connor Sullivan, my co-host. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing pretty good, but hey, I'll tell you what, John, though. I went racing on during the spring break. Got to go to Hickory Motor Speedway for the Easter Bunny 150, and boy, oh boy, was that one a dandy, to say I, the least. I'll tell you what, uh, super late models around Hickory Motor Speedway, especially with the Pro All-Star Series, just amazing. The car store goes there as well, has a great race with a throwback race uh, coming up in a couple of months. Uh, Hickory Motor Speedway is a lot of fun. It's a perfect size racetrack, a uh, lot of history there. Um, certainly, uh, you know, one of the racetracks we'd love to see refurbished at some point to really bring it back to its prominent stature. Still got its character, um, to say the least, though, but tell you what, that race uh, had its drama, but it's cool to see Derek Ramstrom get um, another win in that one. Not bad for a guy from Worcester, Mass. Absolutely. In the Pro All-Star Series, the Northern Circuit, uh, Oxford Plains Speedway, Garrett Hall yesterday getting the win there. You'll be able to see the highlights to that race on the Speed 51 Video Network. Become a premium subscriber today. Um, just nine ninety nine a month, seventy nine ninety nine a year, and you can see tons of videos. More than three thousand currently uploaded daily by Tom Ryan and his staff. They do a great job with that. Mark Keeler kind of manages the live department of that, and you can see I believe it's up to over seventy five races now for premium subscribers only. And then we have a bunch of pay per view races as well, just in co according to our contracts with the racetracks and the series themselves. So so much to see on the speed 51 video network all the highlights from this past weekend uh the ultimate double header there in south carolina and georgia all those highlights already up recaps to come as well so you can see all that on the speed 51 video network and one of the races that will be live on the speed 51 video network will be this saturday volunteer speedway in bulls gap tennessee we were already there once this year and the fast track race Racing series, Zach Evans going there this weekend. That's going to be a blast to see those pro, pro late models around that high back bank dirt track. When we went there earlier this year, that was had been my first trip to the Gap, and my gosh, what an incredible racetrack and and just great people there too. Just, just really an awesome experience. I can't wait to go back. I can't wait. I know you're looking forward to it. I'll watch it this weekend because I'll be at Nashville for the Arca Menard Series, but I'll be peeking in at all your coverage. You and Cody Geyer will be there at Volunteer Speedway in Bulls Gap, Tennessee. Let's go to the PFC Performance Hotline. First-time caller, Carson Ferguson. Carson, you're going to be at Bulls Gap this weekend with the Fast Track Racing Series. How much are you looking forward to it? Yes, sir. Bulls Gap's a, a great track to run out. We went there for the first time this weekend, and I'm pretty excited to get back there with the tour. So you went this past weekend with their weekly racing series to do a little uh, R&D work, apparently, for this coming week's touring series schedule. Uh, how was it this past weekend? Yeah, it was, it was good. Uh, we never, I never even saw the track before this weekend, so it was, uh, it was definitely cool to see the high banks. I've never seen anything like it. Um, but we, we made a, we had the wrong tire hunt for practice and qualifying and then 
the heat in the feature we had a, a right front shock break getting into turn one so uh we didn't really we didn't really learn a lot but we we have notes on what to start with so um i think we're going to be good we're going to try and run for the fast track point so um we're just going to try and get a good finish and always of course go for the win how tough is that series? I mean, it, it is definitely the premier pro late model, crate late model, whatever you want to call it, uh, dirt track series in America. How difficult will that be going after that championship this year? Yeah, you know, you're always going to have the the really good guys show up. Um, but, I mean, even the series locals, uh, I mean, volunteer, their locals always run up front uh, in the fast track races and just the locals in general at every track we go to. Uh, this is my first year touring with them and we ran a couple races with them last year and uh, it's a really good really good series to run and I mean the Sika series around home they're uh, they're really stout too so uh, anytime the Sika boys run fast track as well we're always uh, a contender I feel like we're taking a look at some of your highlights from Tacoa Raceway for the Fast Track Racing Series opener there. Uh, Carson was in the double zero. And, Zach, you were there. You watched him race at Tacoa. What do you think of old Carson Ferguson? Oh, definitely a, a great young talent. And I, I did want to kind of bring that up. Uh, although you haven't been to, to uh, volunteer before this weekend, you had some success last year with the fast track series in that general geographic direction uh winning the east coast rumble little mini series under the fast track banner last year the youngest guy ever to do that what was that moment like being able to take that mini series and grab that championship belt um it was it was shocking to say the least uh you know we went to beckley friday tyler county saturday and then finished it off at with raceway um we never been to uh, Beckley or Tyler County as well and uh, qualifying and heat races put us in the hole with those two and I think we drove from about 19th to 3rd at Beckley and then uh, like 22nd to 7th or something at Tyler County and then finished 3rd at with so uh, with the group of guys that race with the Fast Track Series it was um, I think it definitely showed that we're here to win and um i mean hopefully we can still pick up a win this year but we're just trying to learn the tracks we go to and i think once we go back to the same track twice we'll be a lot better as well well carson um you've had an interesting career a um, lot of accomplishments on the legend car rings both you know, on the dirt and on the asphalt as well so um just wondering how did you uh, manage to get into the pro late model fast track ranks um, you know, you always want to go asphalt, and especially coming from legend cars, uh, you always want to go asphalt because not a lot of people make it from dirt. Um, but, you know, just the dirt was more in the family and more in our budget to do every weekend. And we could afford to do asphalt and good equipment, but you'd only get to run about three or four times a year. Um, but with the dirt stuff, we have good equipment now, and uh, we're able to follow a, a, a tour. So, um, I mean, dirt's definitely more cheap to run. It's not it's not cheap as it as it is, but it's a lot better than asphalt. But um, I think the I still run the legend car some because I think it it betters you all the time and every time you get in it. Um, but dirt's definitely more fun behind the wheel. I will say that. Hey, you talked about dirt being in the family. Uh, just to let everybody know, there you are cousin of. Chris Ferguson, who, of course, has won the LucasArts Late Model Dirt Series, the World of Outlaws, Late Models, and so forth. So so how much – I know Chris is a big fan of yours because he's always mentioning your name when I speak to him. How much of an influence has he been on your career and your driving on the racetrack? Yeah, each time I go to a new track, you know, I try and call him before. Uh, he's not able to come to a lot of races just because he's following – uh, other series and stuff like that and we're always racing on the same weekends but uh, he gives a lot of feedback on what I should do and look out for each track we go to and uh, his dad's really big with helping us with our shocks and everything giving us a good starting point um, so I mean they're, you're, they're always there to help like I said so I gotta really thank them for that and speaking of you know going to these new tracks doing a lot of that chasing the fast track series this year started out at Tacoa with the fourth place finish unfortunately 
uh, King of the Commonwealth was a washout, but you'll be back at it again this weekend. What are your thoughts and uh, aspirations going into the rest of the season with that deal? Had a pretty solid start. Yeah, I definitely want to keep it going. Um, hopefully, we're going to try and run all the races, but, you know, you're always going to have the chance of blowing a motor or getting in a big wreck. So, if something like that happened, and we, of course, maybe miss a race. But, um, but yeah, I'm, I'm hoping to keep the streak alive, you know, with top five cent races that we finished within the top five this year. And uh, I'm looking, I'm really looking forward to having a good year and hopefully getting some wins. Dude, I can't believe you're 18 years old. I feel like I've known you forever. You're 18 years old now. You've been on the short track draft in the past. Uh, in fact, back in 2015, you were the 49th pick in the short track draft. How much have you followed that through your career? Uh, your cousin, Chris Ferguson, has been part of it back when he was younger. He's an older dude now. Uh, but uh, you know, how much do you follow that, especially as a guy that has done both pavement and dirt? Yeah, you know, short track drafts are a pretty big deal. Um, it was cool to see Chandler Smith win it this year. He's he's a wheel man as it is. Um, yeah, it was cool to get get drafted the 49th in 2015. And, of course, Chris has had his history in it. But um, hopefully we can turn some heads head this year and get on up the list. Well, listen, I, I will tell you, that you are on the short track draft this year. I know last year you missed, uh, but this year you're back on it. You had some uh, top votes up there. You know, I had a couple top five votes. So a lot of people you've been impressing out there, especially with your runs, with that big victory and fast track this year and a, and a good run to start the season as well. So that's got to, you know, boost your spirits a little bit. Yeah, for sure. It's uh, We really came along or started running better uh with that new xr1 we got and um our we our big sponsors who part grading company and uh the racing warehouse psc a lot of these great product sponsors as well uh we were able to get xr1 and really um up our up our standards for where we can run you know before i was happy to make a race with our old warrior and now we're able to to run top five in big races so um it's just me my dad and our buddy cameron and we have a few guys help us like ethan and uh cody comes along sometimes but um like i said each time we go to a new track it's kind of hard because we don't know how much it's going to change and um but i think whenever we have brian chris's dad there at the track we're able to do a lot better the first time we go um, but definitely this year, our second time back to a track, I think we should, we're a contender. Hey, Carson, this race at Volunteer Speedway in Bulls Gap, Tennessee, will be live on the Speed 51 video network this Saturday night. For a young racer like yourself, what does it mean to you, your team, your family, whatever it may be, to have some of these races live for people to be able to see? Yeah, it's cool for sure because you're not always going to have uh, your all your people be able to make it to the track so whenever you can uh just stay home and watch it on the computer or anything it's uh it's a big deal and it also helps us get our name out there you always want to promote yourself and uh, get your name out there for other teams and that could potentially open up doors so uh, anytime you can get more people to watch you race the, the better it is are we going to see you run any summer shootout races this year former champion you are um i'm not sure uh I'm I'm trying to stay in the legend car some, um, but Latigan Motorsports uh, they they have a car for me. So anytime I can run a legend car, uh, we're gonna always try. And the summer shootout's really convenient for us because it's on Monday and Tuesdays instead of the weekend. So it doesn't interfere with any of my dirt stuff. But um, we're definitely gonna try and make a couple. We may run the first few and see how it goes. But um, but yeah, we'll we'll be there. Well, Carson, we appreciate you coming on the show. We wish you the best of luck at Volunteer Speedway this Saturday night. Go get yourself a win. I appreciate it. Thank you for having me on. You got it. Carson Ferguson, uh, cousin to Chris Ferguson, uh, battling his own way up the short track draft and now in the dirt side of things. Big winner in fast track last year. Title contender this year in fast track. And I, I love what I see out of this kid. 
Uh, he was somebody we were really keeping an eye on a couple of years ago. Uh, like I said, he was 49th in the short track draft several years ago. Uh, he won that title out at the summer shootout. Then he kind of disappeared a little bit. Um, you know, didn't have the finances to do what he wanted to do. And then has come back now running pro late model racing in the crate world on the dirt and, and making a name for himself and using the fast track racing series to do it. Yeah, it's really something um, to see, especially considering that, you know, this is a series in itself that's really on the fast track um, to success. How you got um, all these guys, um, you know, coming in and even some of the asphalt guys like Bubba Pollard, they want in um, on some of the action as well. So it's going to be cool to see what the fast track series has going on in 2019. Zach, I want to ask you, because you did go to that race at Tacoa. How was that race? And what were your initial thoughts of fast track coming out of Tacoa? Oh, I mean, it was it was a really fun race, um, and Tacoa was a really interesting facility. Mark was there too. You know, I, I think I will be honest. When I first saw the racetrack itself, I wasn't sure what kind of racing it would produce, but it was really, really strong. Lots of side by side racing. The 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 outside groove really came in a lot better than I expected from first glance at the track, and and those fast track cars are just so fun to watch. And what's interesting that you're going to get to experience is the the initial race this year for the Future Stars Tour for Fast Track as well uh, to help some of the younger kids develop. And it's just something that Stan and DJ are working on to try to really hone the skills of some of these young stars coming up through the ranks. You know, it, it, I that is coming up. And I saw a Facebook post that really caught my attention because you could tell they're really trying to do this the right way. And they said that they're going to have, you know, these big safety meetings before the race, and they're even going to have a test. These guys got to be able to get out of the car in the case of a fire, God forbid, but it could happen. That's one of the dangers of racing. You've got to be able to get out of the car within a certain amount of time before they'll let you race in that race. They really want to make sure these kids are ready in every sense of the word to, to advance their racing careers. And I just think it's cool that they're taking those steps to make sure this is done the right way. Hey, Mark, you'll like this because we talk a lot about, you know, payoffs and so forth in racing. That Future Stars Tour race at Volunteer Speedway on Saturday night. Remember, this is just kind of like a, you know, a, a ladder, uh, you know, or excuse me, a rung on the ladder. Um, it's a development class. Still pays $800 to win. That's incredible. <laughs> And knowing, I mean, you know, Ferguson just alluded to it. It's it's so, I don't want to say cheap because nothing is cheap in racing, but it costs. It's very uh, more affordable. Affordable. There you go. That's <laughs> the best way to put it. Um, so, and I've been really impressed by that. Even you know, of course, you know, races that have gotten rained out or canceled, but seeing the payouts on that dirt side between Fast Track and Ultimate, and it really seems like they're trying to put uh, put a lot on the line for the drivers to reward them. So something like that for you know a developmental series and i i think the safety aspects like zach was talking about that's that's really cool uh i know a an old friend of mine from from uh my days at new smyrna and his kid was going into quarter midgets or from quarter midgets into trucks and and they spent months and months in their garage and he would time him getting out of the truck to see how quick he could get out with the hans device with the helmet all that but uh to see the series actually stepping up you know we just what was it 20 minutes ago we just talked to jojo and uh it's obviously important to safety in these cars so to see the series actually step up and, and want to take um that you know put an emphasis on that with those kids and being part of it i think that is just awesome and, it, and it's something that may not pay dividends in terms of winning but if you can make it instinctual for, for kids at a younger age, I don't think there's a lot of focus on a lot of kids that come out of, out of go-karts or even some kids go right into racing, and there's not enough emphasis put on safety, in my opinion. So to see the series stepping up and then to know that, you know, they're even still putting some money on the line. So if you win, you're, you're going to get something. I think that's really cool. Yeah, it's really neat. Future Star Store and Fast Track is going to be one to watch. Obviously, on the pavement side, CRA has its junior late model division. Madera has a junior late model division. So they're starting to take notice and understand that these kids want to go big-time racing a little bit sooner. Uh, they're not staying in Legends cars for a long time anymore. And, and kudos to all of those series that we just mentioned on doing something like that. And I think it, it also, from the big picture, you talk about future plans. You know, I interviewed Luke Cooper earlier this year. Or not Luke Cooper, his dad, actually. But, you know, Luke Cooper racing uh, late models down at Lawrence County where we were at Friday night. Twelve years old. Twelve years old. <laughs> and, you know, talking to, to his family, their thought process was, why are we, you know, why run 
a four-cylinder or something when we can go ahead and start learning the habits of how to drive these big race cars. I think especially when you have things like the short track draft, you're trying to gain opportunities. It's really important to gain that experience because, as we talked about already this show, you can be 13 years old and be a top draft pick. Well, we are excited to honestly be part of both Fast Track and the Ultimate Super Late Model brand. We are the official video home of Fast Track and Ultimate at Speed 51. We're going to be at the races this weekend. Ultimate also in action, the Mid-Ohio Valley kicking things off at I-77 Speedway. That's going to be a lot of fun in West Virginia. That's a Friday night show. Uh, we will be there with coverage as well as video highlights after the show. And then the Mid-Ohio Valley and the Ultimate Northeast in action at Tyler County Speedway on Saturday night. Uh, that's going to be a lot of fun as well. And of course, the big Fast Track Racing Series on on Saturday night, Volunteer Speedway, just outside of Bristol, Tennessee. Uh, we were all there a couple weeks ago, took the short drive from Bristol Motor Speedway over to Volunteer Speedway, about a 45-minute drive. So if you want to check out some great racing action, remember, you can do it Friday night at I-77 Speedway for the Ultimate Mid-Ohio Valley, and then on Saturday night for the Ultimate Supers Tyler County Speedway and for the Fast Track Series at Volunteer Speedway. We're going to take a quick break here on Speed 51, come back with some more news, some more short track discussion, talk about the Arca Midwest Tour, and a whole lot more. You are listening or watching to the Morning Bull Ring. I'm Bob Dillman. Paramount Pit Foods, unique jerky and trail mix with a twist, delicious game meat jerky or sweet heat trail mix, a convenient anytime snack that's both delicious and good for you. Paramount Pit Foods, making every journey delicious, one pack at a time. Speed 51's video network, where the battles are legendary. Get the full picture on short track racing. We'll take you behind the scenes. Uh, just a meathead. Your track, your driver, your sport, your passion. Dirt, late models, modifieds, and more. Race highlights, recaps, interviews, and thousands of on-demand videos. Speed 51 Network, short track racers home for the best video coverage. If you're watching on our Five Star Race Car Bodies Facebook feed this morning, remember, share the post to be eligible to win two tickets to the North-South Challenge Saturday, as well as the Arkham Menard Series at the Fairgrounds Speedway Nashville. That event, in terms of the super late model side, a co-sanctioned event between three series, the Cars Tour, the Southern Super Series, as well as the Arca C-Ray Super Series, will be a pay-per-view broadcast on Speed 51. But con dog. Friday night, you're going to be part of a live broadcast as well. Claremont Speedway, Claremont, New Hampshire, Granite State Pro Stock Series season opener. One of, of the best uh, tracks for super late mile racing in New England. It's flat, but oh boy, oh boy, is it uh, ever so exciting. It's a very interesting track. Not, both ends are completely different from the other. Um one end is single file, but the other end, th turns three and four, some of the best side-by-side -side racing you'll see. I loved going to Claremont as a kid, one of the 283 racetracks. You hear that, Mark? 283, uh, so yeah, you're 103 yeah. or whatever. 102. 102. 63. You've also had about a 20-year advantage over me. <laughs> uh, 63 for me as of Saturday going to Dixie Speedway. Ah, very time. impressive, very impressive. Let's go back to the PFC Performance Hotline and join Brandon Paul. How many tracks are you up to, bud? 
Oh, I don't keep count. I got, I got more important things to worry oh, about. Oh, oh. They fight about it here in the office. It began be- between Mark Keeler and Rob Blount, and then they asked me how many tracks I went to. I had no clue until I was on a five-hour flight to uh, the West Coast at one point, and I started. I had nothing else to do, so I took out the National Speedway directory, started counting those tracks, and then remembering the defunct racetracks, uh, the lost speedways that I had been to, and 283 is where I could- I'm at. I get the feeling that Brandon doesn't want to say anything because he thinks he might be a little lower than me, perhaps. Oh, a little war of words here, Brandon. Well, I, I just want to bring up that Mark Keeler has this new – he's found his social media presence. <laughs> uh, I, couldn't, I couldn't believe it this weekend when I saw that, that he actually tweeted a photo from his personal account before Connor because anyone that knows – knows that one of the first thing, things Connor does when he gets to the racetrack, except wondering what's for dinner, is take a picture <laughs> and put it on Twitter. Hey, 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 hey. I'm always I'm always putting the Speed 51 Twitter yeah. account first. Yeah, in Connor's defense, he, I beat him to the punch just because he was actually doing what we were there to do, which was promote the race. So he was doing the tweet on the Speed51.com Facebook feed um, while I just shamelessly did my own personal one. Yeah, yeah. He's he's not shameless at all. <laughs> not at all. Hey, hey I want to get back to the short track rant presented by PFC Brakes. Uh, uh, Brandon, you know, I talked about wanting to discuss picks seven through nine. We've talked about everything else in that top ten, but those picks, Jeremy Doss, Connor Orkresic, and Derek Krause, what are your thoughts on the placement of those three drivers and what they've been able to accomplish in their career? Uh, well, obviously, you have to start with Jeremy Doss at number seven. Um I think that's pretty accurate. I personally had him a little bit higher um, because, and the reason why is because when he has come to the East Coast, that he ha- he has been able to perform. He has been able to compete with the best of the best, the Bubba Pollards of the world, the Ty Majeskis. He's proven he can do that, and I think the big knock on him previously was that nobody knew he could do that. Um, being out on the West Coast, we all kind of call it, uh, I-, I don't know, like we just sort of blind to what happens out there sometimes, I feel like. Um, and maybe don't respect those drivers as much as we should. Uh, and I think Jeremy Doss has done a lot out there. And then coming to the East Coast and be, being able to perform as well, uh, I think that goes a long way. So I had him a little bit higher, but I understand why he was there. Uh, Connor Okrezik at number eight. Uh, I had Connor a little bit lower, um, mostly because I just haven't, I haven't seen outside of Speed Fest the on track performance uh, of somebody like Jeremy Doss. I think if you match those two up next to each other, uh, what Jeremy Doss has accomplished uh, exceeds Connor Okrezik at this time. Uh, obviously, with Okrezik, you're putting a lot of stock into potential. Uh, you mentioned what Marcus said and what Melissa Straley has said uh, about Connor Okrezik, and those are all valid points that could prove to be true. Uh, but but as of right now, uh, I, I think I probably would have had him a little bit lower. And then Derek Krause. Um, this is a guy that a lot of people had him on their ballot. Um, it's just that a lot of people didn't have him as high. Uh, he didn't have as good of a, a quality vote. Uh, he was in a lot of people's mind, um, just not high up as, as, say, a Haley Deegan or, or even a Geo or Logan Seavey or, or somebody like that ahead of him. Um, personally, I think the big knock on Derek Krause is that he hasn't performed well in the super late model. Uh, he has one, uh, Arca Midwest tour victory, um, on his resume. And other than that, when he, when he's competed in the big super late model races, he struggled a little bit. Uh, and I think he'll probably be the first one to admit that. Uh, but obviously what outweighs that at this time is his success in the K&N cars with multiple K&N West wins picking up the win in the season opener at New Smyrna with the K&N East. Um, so I think that probably played a big factor with, with the 80 people that voted in this year's draft. I just put him a little bit lower just because he has struggled in Super late models. To play devil's advocate with you a little bit, Brandon, I had Kraus very high on my ballot in the top five. Um, yes, I will admit the Super Late Mall performances – haven't always uh, been what we we hoped. He was shaking Mark's his head, shaking disagreeing his head. with you. Was, he was. He... Oh yeah, I got notes over here for Brandon and for you. Okay, well that's fine. But, Brandon, I mean, you should know Brandon that he was really shaking his head when you were talking about Okrezik. Yep. 
We'll get to that. Let, let Zach continue his point, though. My point being, <laughs> you know, we 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 mentioned, um, you know, with with a driver like Haley Deegan, how how important it is to perform well at the K and N level with those heavy cars if you want to move up the ranks. So wouldn't Derek Krause, his success in the K and N, both East and West, won the East opener this year at New Smyrna? Why would that not be a feather in his cap? I agree with you. Uh, he wasn't in my top ten. I will tell you that. I uh, wasn't in my top 15. I agree with Brandon, but you, you, you're right. You bring up a little bit of a double standard with Haley Deegan as well as Derek Krause. But I believe that, that Haley Deegan has that marketability. And that marketability makes her, you know, definitely a, a better draft pick than Derek Krause at this stage of the game. Now, Derek Krause can continue working on his success and he could definitely rise in terms of a top five pick possibly even next year but i think haley deegan is definitely one that is is more looked at in terms of not only her on-track success but also her exposure level than Derek kraus kraus has got to step up the game if you look at their personalities you know one is very vanilla and I'm talking about Derek Krause. He's not an exciting kid, and I'm not trying to knock him. He's a nice kid, but he's not very exciting. Haley Deegan, she's bubbly. She's fun. She definitely has a great personality. Now, listen, some people say she's a little too over the top, and I've had discussions with, with those people about that as well. But I I go with what, what Brandon said. I, I was kind of a little bit surprised, honestly, that Derek Krause was top 10. Do I think he belongs top 15? Yes, I do, even though I had him out of my top 15. And just to be fair, okay, I'm going to give you, you know, my top 10 picks. Um, and, and listen, if you disagree with me, that's fine. That's why we had 80 people vote, and then we have an equation to, uh, to you know, get the consensus for the top 100 picks in America. And it has to do with number one picks, top five picks, top 10 picks, quality picks, uh, amount of picks. Haley Deegan was on the ballot for more than any other driver that was on the ballot. So Deegan gets that top five choice. Derek Krause winds up just a little bit further back in the latter half of the top 10. Here were my picks, my top 10. Haley Deegan, number one. Chandler Smith, number two. Christian Eckes, number three. Well, right there, I, I, and Bobby Pierce, number four. <laughs> I, I had the top four right, just in the wrong order. Number five was Giovanni Bramani. Number six, Austin Terrio. It's a crime that he doesn't have a full-time ride. It is a crime that he wasn't higher in the draft. That's ridiculous. Zeb Wise is one of the kids that I'm really looking at in the USAC open wheel ranks to make a name for himself this year. I think he's got talent, he's got personality, and that's why he was my number seven pick. Logan Seavey, Zeb Wise was in front of Logan Seavey for me, but Seavey was in the top ten. Hudson O'Neill was there as well. I think the kid has just got a personality like you wouldn't believe. He could talk the talk, he could walk the walk, and he can certainly drive as well in the dirt late model rank so two dirt late model guys for me in the top 10 and then Carson Quapple was my 10th pick now I think Carson Quapple coming out of you know his dad was from the Midwest he's from North Carolina coming out of those outlaw carts he won on the Arkham Midwest tour last year the kids got so much talent the only reason why Carson Quapple wasn't higher for me and I think he certainly could be is because of one thing he's got to get better in his interviews He's a little bit boring, but remember, he's a young kid. He's a teenager. He's still learning the walk and how to talk the talk. Uh, some people have it. Some people don't. We've seen people progress, and I think Carson Quapple is one that is going to progress. That was my top 10. My number 11th pick actually matched perfectly with our number 11 overall selection on the Speed 51 short track draft presented by PFC Brakes, and that is a kid out of the Dirt Leap Model ranks as well that is really making a name for himself. He comes from the Lone Star State of Texas, 22-year-old Tyler Erb. They call him turbo his nickname matches his on track and off track prowess the kid has got an attitude you know he's kind of like a scott bloomquist doesn't care about what anybody else does on the racetrack only what he and his team does 
He's with Best Performance Motorsports. He's got a chip on his shoulder, and he's winning races. And therefore, I had him as my number 11 pick, and coincidentally, he winds up the number 11 pick in the short track draft. Brandon, what do you think about that? Uh, I I mean, honestly, it kind of goes back, and I, I love dirt late models. I think it's like their own little world um, that they're in. That's, that's a great world. Um, but put it put it that way. Uh, but I mean, I don't know. As far as I have most of these dirt late model guys you mentioned a little bit lower, just for the fact that I don't see them going to NASCAR, um, and that's what I base mine on. Maybe that's wrong. I don't know. Uh, but but that's how I look at it. Hey, I don't Mark, see Tyler Herb. I, I'm going to cut you oh. off here. So yeah. who's the dirt hater? Who's yeah, the dirt? I, <laughs> I've been getting the reputation, but you know, Brandon's a modified guy from modified country. You want to talk about people that are in their own little world? Modifieds are, are kind of the same way up in that yeah. northeast. The, yes. Those tour type hey, modifieds. Hey, He's not a modified guy, Mark. Connor. Yeah, so. Mark. He's a, hey, Brandon's hey, Mark. the one who calls hey. modified. Go ahead, Brandon. Hey, Mark. Um, who finished third in the day, uh, at Talladega yesterday? <laughs> Wait a second. Even Mark had finished third at Talladega. I'm sorry. I was going to say Brandon. it's Talladega, dude. Brandon, but, you're the one who well, has for years called but, Modifieds nothing but overpowered go-karts. Oh, 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 wow. That's just to get you going, Connor. That's <laughs> oh, no, no, um, no, 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 no. Hey, hey, by the way, Brandon, uh, or Connor, I should say, is there even a modified driver in the top 25, Brandon? I don't think there is. There isn't. Yeah, there isn't. Chase Dowling, I think, is going to be the highest, and I believe he's going to be announced in this next round. Here's the problem with Chase Dowling this year is that he lost his ride, so I'm going to this year. If he had a full-time ride on the NASCAR and Willem Mafia Tour, he would have been top 25 easily. So so much talk about Matt Swanson, too, but he hasn't panned out just yet either. He he needs another year in that number three old blue car. I actually had a dirt modified higher than a pavement modified. Really? But here's my... Here's my point with that whole thing. Um, you're not going to see, at least I don't think so, you're not going to see a Bobby Pierce. You're not going to see Tyler Erb finishing third in the NASCAR Cup Series. Right? Oh, I, I debate you on that, buddy. Whoa, whoa. I Bobby, debate Pierce? Bobby Pierce could do it. Yeah, He could do it. I don't I'm know about saying, Tyler Erb, but I think Bobby Pierce saying, could do it. I'm not saying he couldn't. I'm saying he's not going to. That's oh. what I'm saying. I just you don't. Is it a lack of happening. opportunity? I think it's a lack of they're just in their own world where they're perfectly content being full-time dirt late model racers. And Bobby Pierce said that when I talked to him the other day. He's perfectly content. If he doesn't get those opportunities, he loves what he's doing. He's making a career out of it. Um, And that's perfectly fine. Like I said, I'm not knocking them at all. It's just when it comes to the draft and talking about going to the next level or going to NASCAR, I wouldn't even call it the next level compared to dirt. Cause like I said, it's almost like two separate things, but I just don't see in regards to NASCAR. I don't see Bobby Pierce, Tyler Herb, Hudson O'Neill. I, I don't see them taking that shot. I'm not even going to say I don't see them getting it because I do think they're good race car drivers, but I don't see them taking it. And that's why I would be more likely to put say a Corey Heim who I think was one that should have been way higher in the draft. He was 15th. Uh, I'm really high on that kid. Um, he was he was 15th, um, and I think he should have been higher than, say, a Tyler Erb. Hey, by the way, I got two things for you, okay? Number one, I think you're right. Bobby Pierce is content being a dirt late model driver because it's badass, bottom line. It, it's it's the most exciting form of short track racing, I believe, in the, in the country. Okay, so he's fine. His dad, he's a second-generation uh, driver. His dad's a Hall of Famer. Okay, so he's happy. But trust me, I've talked to Bobby Pierce. He would love to get that opportunity. Uh, Hudson O'Neill would love to get that opportunity. I haven't spoken to Tyler Erb about it. But it would be interesting to see with a good opportunity, um, you know, what they could do. So, by the way, Kevin Ramsell just actually texted me, and he wanted to ask you this question. He wanted me to ask you, but I'm not. I'm going to preface it by saying he's asking you this question. Is Brandon going to say that Gray Galding is an awesome driver because he finished second Saturday at Talladega? That's not what I'm saying at all. I'm (laughs) saying that you don't see those dirt late model racers even getting the opportunity to do that. Ryan Priest came from the modified. He did it. I mean, you go back, Steve Park, those guys. They, they had the opportunity, and even modifies. We discussed it in previous year's drafts with, with say, a Timmy Salamito. He, I maybe didn't put him as higher because until Ryan Priest, you really hadn't seen 
a driver progress from those ranks in a long time. You have to look at where they're coming from. They're coming, the stars that are going into the next level are coming from late models, ARCA, K&N, and that's, that's pretty much, I mean, you have Christopher Bell who came from, from the dirt ranks a little bit uh, with midgets and sprint cars, but outside of that, I mean, the majority of your drivers taking that next step, your Daniel Hemricks, um, are coming from, from the asphalt late model uh, in K&N ranks. That's just, that's just percentage. It's, it's pretty so, much facts. So let me ask you this. A couple of people that I thought might have been a little bit higher on the list, and listen, they were not in my top ten, but I thought the consensus would elect them into the top ten. Sam Mayer has been putting in some pretty good performances. He's 12th overall, uh, dominated the K&N East race at Bristol Motor Speedway. Your boy D. Griff there has done well, and he seems to get a lot of votes, um, but could do better, is my opinion, honestly. You like Corey Heim, you said, at 15th. Austin Terrio is 16th. Uh, uh, you know, Tyler Courtney, another open-wheel guy there at 17th. Carson Hosevar at 18th and Ty Gibbs at 19th. Those two, I thought, because of different reasons, uh, were going to be a little bit higher. Obviously, Carson Hosevar has been winning everything since he was 12 years old at Berlin Raceway in an outlaw late model uh, and now is doing pretty well in the Arkham Menard series. And then Ty Gibbs, he finished second in just about everything here recently in the Stock Car Wars as well as winning a, winning a late model stock car race this year. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on all of those, Brandon, before we let you go? Well, I think I was actually talking with Derek Griffith uh, this past weekend at Oxford, and he was talking how they were keeping an eye on the draft and whatnot. And honestly, when it comes to Derek, and I told him this, I said, I don't think it's necessarily anything he did. Last year he was 12th, so um, he dropped the 13th. He dropped one spot. I think it's more you had some of these young kids uh, like a Giovanni Bramante, like a Haley Deegan, uh, Connor Okrezik, that, that stepped up and kind of came within the last year, kind of came out of uh, nowhere, I guess you could say, and, and jumped over Derek. And, and honestly, as far as on-track performance, Derek probably had the best year of his career last year, winning the past national championship, going down to the Snowball Derby, qualifying in his first race, uh, in his first attempt, beating Bubba Pollard in the 100-lap race at New Smyrna, uh, he had a good year um, on the racetrack. And to have it to see him drop kind of doesn't make sense in that in that from that standpoint. Um, but like I said, I do think it's more so because of some of these people who have emerged. Um, other people looking down the list: Tyler Courtney. I had a little bit higher. Uh, just because he, uh, he has a good personality, good social media, and he knows how to get it done on the racetrack. I think he, he's the complete package. I would have had him a little bit higher. Uh, Austin Terrio, obviously, I'm from Maine. He's from Maine. Uh, I'd like to see him succeed. It's Like you said, it's, it's a tragedy that he doesn't have a ride uh, in something right now. I know he's working on um, some sort of deal with Bill Fast Racing to compete in some cup races possibly. Um, later in the year, but uh, the fact that, that he won the ARCA championship in the season that he had in 2017 and then sat on the sidelines and, and served as a driver coach or mentor, spotter, all the different things he was doing last year instead of focusing on his own career, um, that it's, it's just disappointing and, and kind of shows where, where we're at as far as what it takes uh, in order to, to succeed in this sport. I think the big thing for D. Griff, honestly, Derek Griffith out of New Hampshire, is the fact that he needs to get outside of his realm if he wants to break into the top ten. He won at New Smyrna. I understand that. But New Smyrna is a, a different deal anyway. I would want to see him go somewhere else and win there, and then I think it would, he would be a viable top 10 option right now because he's he's a homer he does come down south and run in some pro all-star series races which is awesome but i want to see him venture out a little bit i think he would have more of a chance to be in the top 10 i i think a couple other people there that are sleeper picks and we're going to let brandon go because we need to get to greg mccarns from the arca midwest tour but a couple other sleeper picks Last year of eligibility for Travis Braden. I'm telling you, the kid is, t the guy, I guess now, is talented. Uh, the Matrix Care, number 27 in the Arkham Menard series, the point leader right now. If he was able to be with an 
upper echelon funded team. Okay, I'm not knocking his team. I'm just saying they don't have the technology nor the money that some of these other teams do. I think Travis Braden would be one of those guys that would be a top five pick because he's got so much talent. Uh, I love Steven Nassie. I would take a chance on Steven Nassie right here and now. You talk about a guy that would garner attention. You put that big old boy in a NASCAR upper three race car, and guess what? He is going to be doing well both with his on-track prowess, but also he's going to talk the talk. He's not going to mince words, and he's going to get a lot of reaction. He, to me, is like what Kyle Busch was 10 years ago. A lot of fire um, in his belly, uh, not afraid to take any kind of risks, and not afraid to move anybody out of the way as well so i think he's got that kind of personality and just that boldness that i think only guys like kyle bush have nasi is a character and you need characters in this sport just to kind of recap the top 25 nasi was 23rd 24th was brandon setzer good old boy from hickory north carolina newton north carolina uh the son of dennis setzer right there in 24th he could be higher too uh jagger jones breaking into the short track draft for the first time this year jagger jones winds up with the 25th selection 26 through 51 i believe is coming up a little bit later on the day let's go back to the pfc performance hotline and talk to no we're not going to do that just yet uh, we're going to get back to that in just a second we'll talk a little bit more about the draft as we try to get greg mccards on the line um I, I don't know jagger jones i like the fact that he's a second generation race car driver third uh, third gen- that's yeah. right third generation race car driver i forgot about that um and he started well Okay, came up through the ranks, through the karting ranks and so forth, and then going late models, running Kern County, Irwindale, you name it. And now on the K&N series as well. He's a guy that I think might be ranked a little bit too high this year, but next year he can certainly work his way into the top ten. I have to admit, I'm drinking the Kool-Aids on him. I had him at number 12 on my personal ballots on myself. Uh, very impressed um, with just the attention that he's been able to get. And I said um, in... Uh, in my draft reports um, on him that he's basically one of those guys like where did he come from in the last year it's just very impressive what he's been able to do but i'll be interested to see on what he can do especially if he can get out here on the east coast um as well but uh as for some of the other guys on my list i gotta admit i had um, those three dirt lay mile guys that we were talking about um tyler herb um hudson o'neill bobby pierce i have them all in my top 10 there you go. Uh, they, they, they pound the dirt. I tell you what, they know how to drive. Another person that knows how to drive is Carson Quapple. Uh, he winds up in the 22nd spot. He was 10th on my ballot, but he winds up 22nd overall. This year running the ARCA Midwest Tour in a very uh, daunted ride for sure. And that season kicks off this weekend at Madison International Speedway right outside of, got it right outside of Milwaukee there, right outside of Madison the state capital and uh, we're going to talk about that right now we're going to go to the pfc performance hotline and join greg mccarns greg good morning to you as a first time caller hey good morning how's it going i'm doing good we're talking short track racing it doesn't get much better than that right buddy absolutely about time to get the season going here in the upper midwest <laughs> it takes a while for you folks up there in wisconsin to get the season going mark likes pressing the bell for the first time caller over there just to make sure that everybody knows you're a first time caller here on our program but uh you know as a snow yeah, I'm pretty co- new to the short track stuff so <laughs> go slow for me <laughs> it is the snow clear that's the big question because i understand There's you got some snow, snow. clear yeah we, we got four inches of snow saturday at the track and it cleared uh sunday afternoon but it, it uh it had us uh, cancel our uh, street drag that we're supposed to have Sunday at Madison, but uh, grounds are clear and we're uh, all uh, all uh, efforts are are uh, going forward and uh, we'll be ready Sunday for the Joe Street Classic. Did you let the snow melt? Did you get out there and plow a little bit? No, so I'm uh, I'm over forty now, so I've gotten <laughs> wise and realized that snow usually melts in the spring, so no point in getting the equipment out to clear it. It'll 
Mother Nature will, will, will handle it on her own. I can't believe you're over 40. We're all getting old there, Greg, because obviously your dad, a famous promoter as well uh, around that area and so forth. You're a second-generation promoter um, and, and keeping up that lineage and so forth. I, I know uh, you're kind of old school and you're getting a little new school as well, and I like the combination that you got going. But I love the Arkham Midwest tour. Like I told you uh, a couple of weeks ago, we were chatting on text, and, and I said, listen, I am a big fan of the Arkham Midwest tour because – it's a little old school, and that's what I love about it. I, I believe it, if it's not the top, it's one of the top two or three, um, you know, super late model tours in America because of the consensus of drivers that you have and what you've been able to build there. There is quite the following up in that part of the country for the Arca Midwest Tour. Yeah, we, uh, you know, we, we just try to keep things simple and, and stay true to our short track heritage, and uh, we're – we're race fans first, so we we try to put down shows that people want to come see and spend their money on a ticket and be entertained and make sure that the caliber of driver we have is uh, top notch and we feel we have that and uh, you know the the respect amongst our drivers is uh, second to none and it's been that way uh, you know since the seventies or even before because guys would run six seven days a week and you had to have your car together and that's uh that's carried uh, forward here to, to this generation of drivers. So uh, we take a lot of pride in the shows that we put on, and whether it's, uh, you know, the Joe Shear Classic 200, which pays 10000 to win, or the triple 50s that we're doing Memorial Day at Kakana, or uh, the event that we're going to be announcing as part of our show at Jefferson, we try to put on shows that, uh, that are going to keep the fans coming back and keep the drivers uh on the edge of their seat while they're out there uh, wheeling their machines on, on race night. The Joe Shear Classic has really built over the past few years and, and great car counts over the last several years. What can we expect this Sunday at Madison International? Well, it's an important uh, event from a Madison International Speedway standpoint just because uh, at one point Madison was going to cease to exist and uh, an email got sent from Reno uh, Nevada to to Terry Kunis that owned the track, saying, "Let us let us lease the track for one month and give it the proper uh, farewell." And that uh, that email was uh, to make sure that the Joe Shear Classic would happen one more time, and that uh, it spawned into us. Ended up purchasing the track, which we had talked about previously, but negotiations had fallen apart. So uh, it is a an important event we put a lot of stress on on it because it does kick off the midwest tour season and our season at madison so uh over the years it's been a hundred lapper uh a few years ago we made it into a 200 lap race with our controlled pit stops and then uh last year we made it into a ten thousand dollar to win race and uh you know we haven't looked back so every year we try to try to make it bigger and better this year we're offering uh three set of tires to the first 40 teams looks like we'll be uh, 37, 38 teams. There's a couple stragglers that, that might come on. So it wouldn't surprise me to see 40, but, uh, you know, I, I think the upper 30s is a more realistic car count number. But you're going to see, you know, the, the top guys. We got, uh, you know, the top Midwest tour, touring stars uh, are coming back. So Andrew Morrissey won uh, Oktoberfest last year and also won at Wausau, and he's a former champion. Uh, Dandy Fredrickson, who's a two-time uh, tour champion. Jonathan Island, who's a tour champion. They just had a baby, so uh, hopefully they're able to get the, the car ready to go. Austin Mason won two shows last year, including his uh, first-ever win uh, with us on the tour. was the Joe Shear Classic last year. So you go right through the, the list of the touring stars, and these guys are, are uh, you know, the who's who of short track racing in our area. Paul Schaefer, Jr., who's a former Ileana champion he picked up his first win last year and it's always strong at madison but then you throw in guys like rich bickle and so on uh you know all those guys running for the championship this year and then you you come back and you know you throw in a time of jesky who just finished fourth at the arca race at talladega he'll be there in the 91 and uh bubba pollard has indicated that he's coming up from georgia and he about won the thing last year before he had a mechanical mishap so uh all those twists and turns and then you throw in uh, some young guns like you know, Carson Quapel, who, uh, you know, he, he won our show in August at the Golden Sands last year, right out of the box, and it continues to impress behind the wheel. And guys like him and Billy Moan and, and, uh, a whole uh, cast of characters that, uh, short track fans may not have heard of, but when they see him out on the track, they realize that these guys are, uh, 
are capable of, of doing great things in the future. So excited to see the, the new class develop and the uh, the veterans keep on uh, keep on their winning ways. So it'll be fun to witness that. We are looking at some of the highlights that's on the Speed 51 video network of last year's Joe Shear Classic. Uh, Steve Apel, uh, always a good-looking race car with that number 51 machine. Uh, He was there. Austin Nason, you mentioned him. Uh, Everybody that you mentioned we've just seen in some of the video that we're showing from last year. And you can revisit that by becoming a premium member of Speed 51. Go on there and check out last year's race at Madison International Speedway and the highlights of it. Um, You know, in terms of beyond this race, you got a good schedule. But it's a short season up there uh, in the Midwest, especially in that area of the Midwest. So what is the season shaping up to be for the Arkham Midwest Tour? Well, it's, it's, a, it's a busy one. So we're big on tradition and traditional stops. So uh, traditionally, the Joe Shear Classic kicks it off, and then we go to, to State Park Speedway in Wausau to start their season on May 18th. And then we come back Memorial Day weekend. We've been running at Jefferson Speedway with the Salute the Troops 100 which is super cool, uh, just a neat event. And uh, we're, we're making it bigger and better this year. And uh, and then we're, for the first time uh, in the tour history, we're going to run at Kakana on uh, Memorial Day, so Wisconsin International Raceway. That's an old ARCO stop. We used to run at Berlin, Michigan on Saturday, and then uh, we'd go to Chet Meiselwick's house, watch the Indy 500 start, and then we'd drive around the lake and get to Kakana and put on a show on Monday. So we only have to go from Jefferson to Kakana uh, this this year, but it'll be fun. So we're doing a, a triple 50, so it'll be 50 laps for the top uh, uh, Fox River Racing Club drivers, so that's their, their Thursday night program. Their top drivers in the 50-lapper, our touring stars in the 50-lapper, and then we'll transfer the top 10 out of each into a finale for 5,000 a win and uh, let, them, let them have at it. So no points on the line or anything, just the cash. We did that at Ileana back in uh, 15 with the CRA guys, and it was just a phenomenal show for the fans. Andrew Morrissey came from 14th to win the thing, and uh, just looking forward to getting that uh, tradition back up and running. And then uh, America's Legendary Oval comes back to life on Father's Day, of working with uh, Track Enterprises and Bob Sargent and his group uh, to bring racing back to Milwaukee Mile. So doing 100 laps there with the Arkham Midwest Tour and, and a host of other uh, uh, support divisions on Father's Day. And then we go to Rockford for the All-Star 100 to uh, finish up June. So it's a busy, uh, so I told my son Al, I said, when the fireworks go off at Rockford on uh, on, uh, on June 29th, we'll, we'll know we've done something because we'll, we'll have done about uh, 40-some events between all of our uh, between all of our different uh, motorsports interests. Yeah, you have your Madison Weekly show there as well, which is always, you know, a bunch of good racing going on on a weekly basis. But I want to talk a little bit more about the Milwaukee Mile. That's going to be an interesting event. Obviously, that track means so much to short track racing, particularly in that area of the country. Um, You know, it hasn't been run the past several years, uh, that racetrack, in terms of stock car racing. Uh, Is there anything that needs to be done? I mean, what's the shape of it? How things are going at at the Milwaukee Mile? Fill us in. Well, uh, I told people last year, so Chuck Deary and I started doing our street tracks there on Tuesday nights. And people, oh, well, it's in shambles and it's this and it's that. I'm like, are you kidding me? I mean, I, I spend hours on end at that place. And, I mean, you could go, we could put a race on yesterday if we wanted to. I mean, it's just, it's ready to go. It's sitting there. Uh, they do the upkeep. You know, the grass is cut. The, you know, the weeds are sprayed. The, the asphalt's in good shape. The walls are in good shape. So other than uh, the scoreboard blew down in a storm, but uh, other than that, uh, we're bringing in a temporary one uh, for the weekend. But, I mean, other than that, the, the place is perfect. You know, it's a it's a beautiful facility that they have there in West Dallas, and uh, uh, it's just good that we're, we're starting to get racing going back there again. It, it needs to be there for uh, – that's our super speedway here in the Midwest, and for it to be dormant like it has has been uh, – unfortunate but we're uh, excited to be part of the effort to bring it back do you know when tickets will be on sale for that race uh tickets are on sale right now if you go to our website uh, you can purchase them now uh the uh area of menards for those of you in the midwest listening uh the tickets will go on sale both for that and for our uh arca uh shore lunch 200 at madison on uh on June 14th, so that weekend, uh, both tickets are uh, available in advance at the Nards, and those go on sale on May 6th, so next Monday.
I'm looking forward to coming up to Madison again this year for the Arkham Menard series. Uh, we love coming up there. Uh, I sat in the grandstands during qualifying last year, and it was just so much fun to listen to the, you know, how they lift off the throttle, get on the brake, reminded me of what I grew up with. And, and that was interesting, looking at some video of uh, some cars going around the Milwaukee Mile. Uh, that place has so much history. Um, you know, it's been part of the NASCAR family for a long time. Of course, the heritage of short track racing in the Midwest. And it's going to be awfully fun to see the ARCA Midwest Tour at the Milwaukee Mile. Uh, certainly, you know, in the next uh, couple of months uh, when we return there to the Milwaukee Mile in Wisconsin. So uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I, I remember doing the old ASA races there back in the day. I think I did the last ASA National Tour race live on TNN at that racetrack. So I am looking forward to to that race and and this year greg you know we've talked about things for so long um you know over the course of the history of speed51.com your development as a promoter with the series now with a racetrack uh, our development in terms of speed 51 and what we're doing and i think it's pretty cool that to some degree we're both old school but we're trying to have that new school approach and this year uh we have joined forces with the arca midwest tour and speed 51 to offer the races of the arca midwest tour as a live stream as long as we get the internet capability at every racetrack what does that speak in terms of the racing with your tour and being available for people outside of your areas to watch the Arkham Midwest Tour in 2019. So I think it's a it's a great deal for the fans to be able to to be able to tune in from uh, home if they're not able to you know, travel to the track. So we know that we we do cover a, a wide uh, regional footprint. So uh, you know if we're at Kakana on a Tuesday night like we've been, uh, it gives that fan in uh, Northern Illinois or down in Indiana. A chance to to watch their favorite drivers run, so uh, it's a it's a great uh, a great relationship, and hopefully uh, something that uh, the fans will take advantage of. Uh, there's still uh, you know nothing better than being at the racetrack, but uh, being able to tune in uh, you know is is a great uh, great option. I, I tuned into some races uh, over the winter, so uh, for my house that I wasn't able to make it, and it's it's a uh, it's nice to be able to be in touch. It's a lot better than trying to keep figure out what's happening on uh, race monitor or what have you to get to get to see it and get to hear it and uh and uh and it's the second best thing to be in there so i'm uh, glad that we're able to put that together for the entire tour this year so yeah. it's worked well on the shows that we've done in the past I agree with you wholeheartedly. It's neat for me as a racing fan that, listen, I can't be up in Wisconsin this Sunday, okay? I have an ARCA race on Saturday, and then I'm coming home to my family, but I'm able to see that. I'm in North Carolina, so it never replaces being there at the racetrack. And if I was in Wisconsin this weekend, I would probably be at Madison International on Sunday for the ARCA Midwest Tour kickoff. Uh, but but this way, you know, we, we increase the exposure. More people are able to watch. If they take a vacation, they can maybe come Madison. That's what this is all about. And we are also offering some incentives to the fans that are going to be at the racetrack with special codes for discounts and so forth. So we're also giving back to those in attendance, Greg. Yeah, it'll be uh, be great to, to kick off that relationship starting this Sunday. So Greg McCarns with us from the Arca Midwest Tour. Of course, the entire season concludes uh, with Oktoberfest at La Crosse. And you talk about events in America. I think that's one of the most underrated events in America. If somebody hasn't been to Oktoberfest, it's a bucket list race for any short track fan in America, and it continues to grow, Greg. Yeah, we've unfortunately we've had rain the last two years, so um, you know. But it's uh, we just you know we we kind of do our our own thing. We try not to toot our own horn too much, and. We just uh, let the results speak for themselves, and year in and year out, we have uh, you know at the very top, if if not the highest, uh, car counts and and for a special event anywhere in the U.S. and uh, you know Wisconsin and Minnesota and Iowa and Illinois, you know it's it's such a great uh, short track hotbed, whether dirt or asphalt, and uh, Oktoberfest is just the uh, culmination of the season that was and. A uh, bunch of bunch of people that love short track racing come together, drinking some beer, sitting around campfires, telling stories about what happened during the year or thirty years prior. So uh, it's just a it's a great. Uh, uh, we say it's where the racing fraternity meets, and, and it's true. You you see uh, drivers that 
from years gone by that you only get to see once a year. You, you see them walking down the midway in their snowmobile suits with a with a beer in their uh, pocket and a beer in their hand and a smile on their face. And uh, it's, it's just a cool uh, it's a cool experience. Uh, I, I've grown up in it, and uh, I, I would be absolutely lost uh, if uh, you know if I wasn't able to be there. So it's uh, if you can experience it, it's definitely one of those. Uh, one of those marquee events that uh, uh, warrants a, a trip to, to West Salem, Wisconsin, every uh, every October. Hey, Greg, before I let you go, uh, looking at what you got going on at Madison, what is this Misfits division that you got? What is that all about? Well, it's either going to be one of the best things I've ever done or one of my biggest failures. <laughs> so we'll find out. But there's a uh, there's an influx of middle uh, classes in our area. And uh, it's depleted the pool, so to speak. So we, for four years, uh, we we tried to rebuild the sportsman class at at Madison, and Madison's a big half mile, and uh, it can be tough on equipment. And uh, when other cars were trying to come, you know, trying to trying to place them in into the sportsman class could be difficult. And while all the tracks are essentially on the same rules, it just uh, it wasn't taken off, but at the same time, I didn't want to turn my back on the drivers that uh, made the investment and bought into the sportsman class because we had a very lo- loyal group of of teams that uh, that were doing that. So uh, we came up with the Misfit Division, and it's it, <coughs> excuse me, it goes back to my uh, my Rockford days with the Bahama Bracket Nationals, which is a breakout uh, event. And so this is the 22nd breakout class. Uh, the gist of it is if you have a stock stud to the firewall, run whatever engine you want. If you have a fab chassis, you need to run a 602. You can run any treaded Hoosier tire that mounts on an 8 inch wheel. And, uh, that's about it. What, what, what carburetor you want to run? Yep, you bet. That sounds good. What rear end you want to run? Okay. That transmission? Sure. We don't care. Just don't go faster than 20 seconds. So it puts the puts it back on the teams to to have their cars. You know they can speed them up, slow them down with weight, spoiler, uh, percentages, tires, carburetor, you name it. There's so many mechanical ways to speed or slow a car down, and the the rule book was just uh, hindering uh, that to to happen. And we had guys that were spending a bunch of money, cubic dollars, trying to chase that speed. Well, now a guy that ran 20.4 can put a four barrel on. And he's right in the game, and a guy that was already running uh, 20 second laps can can you know be right there and not have to change anything. But now you can run a Midwest truck, a modified, a Mid American stock car, a sportsman, a vintage car, um, basically any car you want. We can uh, we can accommodate it in that class. Just don't go faster than 20 seconds. So we'll uh, we'll see how it plays out. Every you get one mulligan per race, so you can go 19.7 or slower. And then uh, go from there. Well, I, I love the idea, honestly, and I, I love the fact that you're trying different things. Uh, you did it with the street drags, and, and and they certainly work as well. I know you get a lot of participants with for that. So, kudos to you for what you're doing at Madison with the Arca Midwest Tour, and and we certainly wish you the best of luck this Sunday with the Joe Shear Classic at Madison. You bet. Green flag flies at, at two o'clock. We'll see you guys then. You got it. Greg McCarns on the morning bull ring with us, a promoter from the Arca Midwest Tour. Of course, they kick off their season this Sunday at Madison, right outside of the state capitol there. I think it's Oregon, Wisconsin is what it is, actually. Uh, but always a great racing at that half-mile facility. Yeah, it's definitely uh, one of the all-time marks um, for Midwest racing overall. And, of course, um, our editor-in-chief friend Paul's actually going to be heading out there, I believe. So, uh Hey, I've heard good things about the Arkham Midwest Tour and the Joe Shear Classic for many years, so I'm expecting a full report from Brandon on this one. I tell you what, we got a lot of live racing going on this weekend on Speed 51. Check it out. Go to our live events page and check out all the live racing that we have going on, both pay-per-view and also for premium network members only. Just more, I think it's more than 100, near 130, I think now 
races this year for speed51.com and more to be announced soon. Claremont of course, we got summer thunder, <laughs> uh, summer thunder coming up. Yeah, Claremont on Friday for the Granite State Pro Stock Series. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, Saturday, we also have uh, the Fast Track Racing Series at Volunteer Speedway. Uh, they're in Bulls Gap, Tennessee. Sunday, we'll have the ARCA Midwest Tour at Madison. Saturday, we also have the Super Late Model portion of the North South Challenge at Fairground Speedway Nashville. So a lot of live racing going on. Get out to your local track if you can, for sure. If you're in the area, there's no excuse. You need to get to the racetrack. But if you're outside of that area and maybe it's like a, a you know, eight, nine, ten hour drive, certainly watch it on speed51.com. And remember, become a premium member of speed51.com to see all the highlights, all the interviews, onboard footage, and music videos on speed51.com. Connor? A lot of fun having you here on the Morning Bull Ring. Well, it's been great, um, but I'm definitely looking forward to getting back home because now the wheels are turning on the Northeast racing season. I got a triple header schedule this weekend. Again, Claremont on Friday for the Grand State Pro Stock Series. Monadnock Speedway on Saturday night. The Valente Modified Racing Series Spring Dash 100. And then it's on up to Thunder Road in Barry, Vermont on Sunday. ACT Late Model Tour. Community Bank 150. It's going to be a great weekend, a lot of stuff going on. Also going to have the Spring Sizzler down at Stafford, which was postponed from this past weekend. And I know Seekonk is opening on this weekend um, as well. Of course, you'll have Oxford's, their first championship race. It's all opening up in the next month. It's a good time to be a Northeast racing fan. Yeah, definitely. You took, take a look at our schedule. It's just amazing how much racing is going on. You mentioned Claremont on Friday night. Uh, Williams Grove in action with the Lucas Oil ACS National Tour. Uh, Anderson Speedway has must-see sprint cars. Uh, the list goes on and on. Uh, you know, the main event series at Bearfield uh, Motorsports Park. Uh, the Bull Ring with the SRL Tour. Uh, they're in action. We'll have coverage out there. Doug Pace and, and uh, stuff going out there to cover that event for us. Uh, the Fairground Speedway Nashville. Tom Ryan, Mark Keeler is going to be there for us. Uh, we go down the list. You mentioned the Monadnock Show for the Modified racing series uh daryl is at the ultimate northeast and mid ohio valley race tyler county speedway uh, and then i-77 speedway a friday and saturday night show in the reverse order that i actually mentioned them uh and then of course uh, brandon jeff fisher uh, going to be up there at madison on sunday so much going on in the world of short track racing we appreciate you watching we appreciate you listening to the morning bull ring 7 a.m to 9 30 a.m every monday morning on speed 51 we'll see you next week